Jeff it. Goldblum's on your microphone. I noticed oh, that, Oh, yeah, too. Jeff Goldblum's been hanging. <laughs> Damn. Nice Shouts fly. to our fly, Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> you are listening to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. It's going to be very hot. It it's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb That bitch is crazy. Okay, here we go again. Another week, another bomb hole. Sitting in the booth with my boy, Stony Buds. What's up, dog? How are you doing, Buds? Really hyped about this this one right now. Yeah, in the booth today, we have a legitimate celebrity. We got Mr. Louis Vito. How we doing, Big Lou? I'm doing well. I don't know about a legit celebrity. I feel honored to be here. <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. Well, you know, when you go through your accolades, you know, I was asking him last night what his accolades are, just so the people know right out of the gate. He's like, yeah, 2010 Olympian, six. X Games medals, two U.S. Open podiums, two Dew Tour Cups, Grand Prix wins. It's just like Dancing Woo. with the Stars. The thing, it just kept going. So, triple, you know. Triple X. Oh, yeah, Triple X. 2015, you won the Most Awesome Athlete Award. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. Is that thing? a thing? Is that yeah, a real thing? That was on a. That was an official like, thing. Yeah, it was the CW Network did that award show. Dude, that's most awesome athlete? That's yeah. a pretty hard question right <laughs> well, now. Well, before we get into all that, though, let's throw it back to, you're from Ohio, correct? Yeah. Yeah, born and raised outside. Well, born in Columbus, uh, raised in Buff Fountain. Okay. Highest point in Ohio. Which isn't that high. Is that that which is also the first concrete street in America, so you guys are all what? welcome for that. Oh, wow. Concrete. And, the, and the shortest street in the U.S. So. Uh, what's the elevation here? Highest, highest. I don't even know. It's not even where the ski resort like is. Feet. It's just like a random <laughs> spot. You're like, really? This is it? This is it. You should maybe change the IG handle to Concrete Streets. Yes. In, uh, yeah. like for Taxwood, you know. So, yeah. anyway. First one. First one. It's like our big claim. So, you get, you grew up riding those tiny little, hills. what are they, 200 vertical hills or something? Yeah, ours was like 300. Yeah. So, it's funny. I go to places, like when I went to Australia for the first time to ride, they're like, oh, we have really small mountains here. I was like, you don't know small resorts if you've never been riding in like the Midwest. And even like out east, like those are big places. Yeah, it like takes me ten seconds. Yeah, huge, right? Huge. And <laughs> yeah. it takes me ten seconds to get down my home hill. But we had night riding, which most places didn't. It looked like a Walmart parking lot because it's really orange lights and they're really shadowy. But I mean, you could ride until two or three in the morning, so that really? made it awesome. Especially when when I got older, when I was younger, I wasn't allowed to really ride then because it was like we have a Honda factory right outside my town, so you get everybody like one piece Carhartts hammered right off their shift, just like bombing it down the hill where you just get smoked but like saturday morning i used to ride the chair with my dad we used to count all the beer cans underneath the chair but then when i would go home for christmas it was great you do family stuff and then you'd be with your boys and you're like let's go take some runs it'd be midnight one o'clock you should go take some runs and now when you go out there you see young kids like 10 year olds 12 year olds out there riding i'm like you're allowed to be out yeah my mom's picking me up at 2 30 i'm like yeah okay that's insane they, they do a lot of the the snowboard mountain uh daycare they just drop the kids off for sure. Just entertain yourself. It's great for parents. You can leave them there till 3 in the morning, too. That's, yeah. that's awesome Maybe for the party chug, parent. <laughs> chug a couple of margaritas and yeah. then... Uh, Send your kid off. Yeah. The bar there pops off. I mean, I know I people bet. that literally go to the bar there at the mountain just to go to the bar. Like, it's a place to go to. Really? And then they go ride or they're just going to the bar? No, they're just going to the bar. That's yeah, it's <laughs> like a place to hang out. Um, you mentioned your dad. We do something where our Patreons... Uh, I don't know if you heard of that. They kind of yeah. support the program. Yeah. They send in questions. We actually, Pat Moore is a Patreon. He sent in a question for oh, you. Oh, that's how to be good. He said, Louie, your dad has always been by your side from day one. Beyond being an incredible, nice, and welcoming man, I know he's a successful entrepreneur in the radio industry. Did he help you navigate your career? Or would you say some of that spirit was just passed on to you? Well, just a little bit about my dad. So my dad's from... Uh an immigrant mother, single. Uh, her, his dad died when he was two. So my dad always lived his life like, I'm going to do this to prove I can do it without a dad or things like that. Whereas you see nowadays, a lot of people, you know, they're looking for, oh, I don't have somebody to do this. I can't do this. My dad's like, I want to prove that I can do it. And he was a, a really good wrestler. So he was number two in the state of New York for a while, coach wrestling. So he was definitely like a hard ass in the sense of hard work always. And if I did a team sport, it was okay, if we lost, but can you look yourself in the mirror and say that you did everything in your power and you played as hard as you could? If the answer is yes, that's all that matters. So those kind of things definitely were instilled in me, like hard work, and, you know, you can control that. You can control being the hardest worker on or off, and then you have no regrets looking back. Um, and then my dad bought 
two radio stations in bankruptcy um, when I was probably just born. So he was definitely grinding out at that point. And he's helped me out so much. And it's funny because there's so many things. I feel like a lot of people can say it with their parents in general, where when you're a kid, you think they're crazy for saying it. Then when you get older, you're like, wow, you were right. Makes a lot of sense. (laughs) There's things like that in snowboarding that, I mean, he grew, we started day one together, but he never grew up snowboarding. He was never in the industry around surfing, skating, none of that. And so like, I remember he was talking to people. I think it was actually Rob Kingwell because Rob Kingwell was coaching me at, at Wendell's when I was younger. Shouts before, to Kingwell. Yeah, I love, <laughs> love Kinger. He's yeah. the best. Yeah, yeah. But like before, I think it was 98, like, you know, talking to him about getting a trainer. And that was like unheard of to have a trainer. Like before like Nagano, it was like, you got to be kidding me. Sure enough, you know, that's something that a lot of people have nowadays. Um, he always thought about like media training and being able to have, you know, talk to the camera and be able to have a full sentence and converse. That was important. Um, he always kind of managed my agent as well. Like he and Todd Hahn always worked hand in hand together. But the things that my dad took from like the business side, some people in snowboarding hated it. And then some people, well, that's a really good idea and went with it. But there's just so many things, like even a podcast. Like he was telling me to do a podcast, like honestly, five, ten years ago. Really? That would have been like, yeah, I would have yeah, been like be, Adam Carolla yeah, back then, you know? But it. you're like that, no. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I do that? Like, yeah. I don't have time for that. But there's so many things that he was ahead of his time on. And there's a lot of people that don't like the way he does business because it's he's, like, very blunt and straightforward. Yeah. And snowboarding's not quite on that scale yet. But he's taught me so much. But mostly it's just the work ethic and, you know, don't have any excuses. Like, find a way. And he kind of sa- says that to his salespeople, too. It's not that they're not buying it's that you're not selling. So that's the way to look at it rather than, well, they're not buying anything. Well, you're not selling it to them no, because there's a right. way to sell it to them. Um, so not taking no for an answer. Kind yeah. Of thing. And yeah. he, and he always like his, the dad joke he always has is like, Oh, Louis is an SOB. He's a son of a broadcaster, yeah. <laughs> but I got, so, I so have he was stu- on air, right? Is well, that- he, he did sales for a while in Columbus. And then when he bought the station, he would do everything. And you know, if he didn't have enough money to hire people at the time, he would do whatever it had to, to do because it was in bankruptcy. He had no money. And so he kind of built it literally from bankruptcy up. And then, you know, now he has, he started two more. When most people are retiring, he has two more. You know, people are like cashing their IRA. He's like, nah, keep it in. I'm going to keep, I, he just works. So he Hustle. works seven days a week, but he loves it. And, you know, people always say like trying to find this perfect job. Like, yeah, radio is like his passion, his love, but you're still going to have bad days. Like he's stressed out. He has ups and downs, but he loves what he does. Yeah. And and that's the thing that I think also he's instilled in my sister and I. Like, yeah, you got to find what you love to do. Find something that you could do for the rest of your life without getting paid. That's normally what your passion would be. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, I mean, I love snowboarding, and I'll still snowboard when nobody's paying me to snowboard. I might not be chucking myself as much as yeah. I am now, but, you know, that's how you kind of know what your passion is. So, I mean, he probably would have done bigger markets if it wasn't for helping out with all of my stuff. But, you know, I've been very lucky and blessed to have both my parents really in my corner and helping me and kind of guiding me and also like managing my my money and everything like that or helping I remember me. seeing Man- your managing dad. Managing the bisque. His dad was com- would come around and really help him out. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember yeah. it was rad and it obviously impressed Pat for him to ask that question. I mean, yeah, but we've, I've known Pat for so long too and – you know, young bloods. Yeah, and my oh, I mean right. my dad yeah. loves Pat. Like he he a lot of those guys, I mean, he's known since they were young too, because you know, Pat and I are pretty much the same age. So he's seen them grow up and like obviously how do you not love Pat's mom? Like she's the best. You yeah, know, so it's like Deb Moore. you always have like that connection too from the USASA days when my dad used to compete. And then when when we switched like out of the groups because he was like in the oldest and I was in the youngest, then he kind of stopped and wanted to watch. But you know he would tell me like he wanted to go to competitions even if I wasn't doing them because he just loves being. He was there. competing. Well, USA, I say yeah. That's so. Sick. That's like yeah. Eddie Wall's dad. Yeah. So that's, sick. How oh, yeah that's how he knows. That's how he knows Eddie Wall Senior. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. So sick. Well, we grew up doing Green Mountain series, and yeah. it's it's been funny watching like you know when you were on forum as a kid, you and Gooner and Pat yeah. and oh, like geez. forum young bloods and. Dude, I do all the contests against these guys, and, and our division was stacked. I think the That's Jack, Jack Matrani, Mike Goldschmidt, uh, who else? Yourself. I, it pushed me to become a video part guy because these guys won all the fucking contests. Yeah, See, right. I like to say, I say that I, I take some credit. I should be taking a commission from some <laughs> from of this stuff. Career, yeah, yeah, dude, seriously. You're welcome. So you're, <laughs> you were always podium. 
Yeah, and I went, before I went to before I went to Vermont, I was and I was middle of the pack always. But man, we were lucky if my ski resort was open on Christmas, yeah. and it'd be like if we got into March, it was like a win. And I remember <laughs> I used to do everything, like all the events, and I'm like in Ohio, so it's whatever. I was middle of the pack. Hard I remember, to move up, right? Yeah, I mean, I just I didn't know what I didn't know. I just like hand dug half pipes, trying to figure it out, going against like Sammy Lepke, who's been like North Lake Tahoe. They're like. The, like the gnarliest crew ever you're like scared when you see their crew walk through the parade and all that <laughs> but i remember i was in telluride i did telluride for two years those are my first two nationals in one year i did a border cross and i like got whooped out or whatever like you know just air chaired onto my Ooh. back ice burned up my back i'm like probably crying i'm like honestly i'm probably nine or ten or something yeah. like that i still have the scar on my back from it too i kid you not zach uh marvin remember zach marvin yeah oh, yeah, yeah. Comes up to me, he's like, I think he even was swearing at me. I didn't swear. I was a good little kid. He's like, what the, what the hell? You're trying to do a fucking backflip in the middle of your border cross? I'm like, bro, a backflip? I don't even know how to do that. I just like literally my feet flung out and I ate shit. Like, <laughs> and chair. he came at me hard about it. And I'm like a little, I'm like, again, I'm from Ohio. I don't know anything. Like, oh, I'm sorry, dude. I, like my back's bleeding. I still have the scar to this day. Like 30 years later. You know thought you were like showing off or yeah, something? Yeah, I don't even know. He just came at me. I'm like, yo, chill out. <laughs> Um, Props to Zach. He gets an air horn. He gets an air horn. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because I like, you know, I obviously he he was a professional snowboarder. I was a professional snowboarder. So I seen him like, and we were kind of, fine. I don't know if I ever really told him the story. Maybe I did. But, you know, it's like funny to think I'm like, man, you came at me hard, man. I was like a little kid from Ohio. I didn't know anything. I think everyone has those little stories about yeah. they met a pro when they were young and something weird happened. Oh, bro. You know what, though? I know we're like, I already know I got plenty of time to talk. So I got two stories and two stories that have literally, I think, played a big part on the way that I view not my career, but how I treat people outside of my career. Um, first one is Mount Hood. I'm there for camp. It's like maybe my second or third year. And this guy comes up to me. He's like, hey, do you want to be in a snowboard ad? I'm like, well, can I ask my dad? He's like, yeah. So I go ask my dad, hey, dad, this guy wants me to be in a, in a snowboard ad, da 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 Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it's like the first year the Burton Red helmets are out, so I got this big Burton Red helmet on, standing there with a, with a stack of books. There's like a, a flat bar that's like kind of built up. Jeremy Jones, nose pressing it, right? Whitey shot the photo. Sick. I'm pretty sure Whitey shot it for alphanumeric, alphanumeric. Oh, ad. damn. My first ad, you know what I'm saying? So that's sick. <laughs> I was all about the pro sales because – Ryo Tahara, my first year at Wendell's, I was I got put with the Japanese because I was too young to stay at camp. My dad was, you know, obviously older because he used to do the camp too. Oh, wow. So they put us with the Japanese up in government camp. This is before Wendell's was at the motel. So Ryo was like my hero. Mm -hmm. So I'd buy a pair of Arnett goggles from 20 bucks. So I was all about the coaches sale because I could afford stuff. My dad would let me, you know, get a couple things. So I remember I asked Jeremy Jones, I'm like, hey, man, um, do you think I can buy a Nixon watch from you? And he's like, no, I'll send you one. And I'm like... No, I'll buy it. Like, my dad will, told me I can buy a watch from you, whatever, whatever. He's like, no, 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 I'll send it to you. Give me your address. Okay. This guy sends me Smith goggles, Smith glasses, Smith visors, stickers, Nixon, Nixon watch. All the, Yeah, Jeremy Jones, all this stuff. No fucking way. But he made the mistake of giving me his number, I think, at one point. <laughs> somewhere between the, in the, like, in the next couple of years. There's somewhere that I had his phone number. I used to call this guy all the time, so sh shout out to both he and his wife because they were so cool with me. I came, and I was actually talking to his wife about this the other day on Halloween because I swear I got to find a photo. I have a photo somewhere because I used to do the bandana just like him. Like, yeah. I mean, this guy was gave me the time of day, sent me a freaking care package. Like, it and was he's insane. bigger, larger How than life at you? this point. He's, like, huge pro. I don't know, 9, 10? And he hooked you up. Hooked like me that. up. Like, and I just, I stood there with a stack of books while he nose pressed behind me <laughs> and was, like, the coolest thing ever. And so I think, I swear, this is where we had the debate. I swear I was in Park City for Thanksgiving, and I called them up. Hey, I'm in Park City, like, whatever. They drove to Park City met with my family and I, brought me a copy of The Resistance, signed The Resistance, like, gave me the time of day. Like, again, I'm, I'm just a kid from Ohio. Like, yeah. I'm literally not That's like That's life-changing. I'm not a protege. Yeah, I'm yeah. not anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. I might have been on Sims, but that's because I'm also from Ohio, so they, yeah. you know, Hooked whatever. You but, like, yeah, came and hung out. The next story is I went to Camp of Champions for two years um, during 4th of July because this is when the U.S. dollar was really strong there, so it was pretty cheap for my dad and I to go. And again, my dad just had a passion for snowboarding before I knew what that even meant. He That's just loved. That's so cool. So again, this is back when J.P. Walker 
you know, the the build beanies were like the oh, thing, yeah, dude. Yeah, the brim so beanie. obviously, again, I'm like, yo, where can I buy one of these? I'm again, the visor I'm 10 beanie. years old. And he's like, I got you. And he gave me, um, I think it was a special blend one or something. And I was like ecstatic. And I'm like, literally, like, people are going to whatever, have whatever thoughts. But we're like watching the snowboard. I'm like sitting in his lap, like, dude, just giving me so much time. Again, I'm like 10 nine, years old, nine, nine 10, 10 years, years old. old, just a little kid. And I somehow I lost it. I think it was in my pocket and it fell out and I'm crying. Boom. Another GMC. This is back when he was on GMC. GMC one gave it to me again. And those are the two stories for me that like when I leave a contest or like anywhere and somebody wants to take a picture, I, you give yourself, you give them as much time as you can because it's like what's 10 minutes of your time last forever. Like those times that they gave me when I was nine, 10 years old, I will forever remember. I mean, I'm 32 and I still remember yeah. and I will forever be grateful, support them, have their back no matter what because of that, because of what they did for me when it wasn't like, again, I wasn't the up and coming kid or we're on a team trip and it's like, he's helping me make it to the next level. Like I was just, randy the random and yeah. he just gave me the time of day i feel like that's what separates the big pros from the average pros is that they take the time to give people mm -hmm. the time of day and but, but it's cool like i mean like honestly for me now granted jeremy did drive to see me and spent a lot more time but like i mean just even an hour two hours of your day of your whole life can There's change so memory. much for somebody else and i mean it who it's knows? left a lasting impression to me. If you didn't, if those guys didn't show up and and give you the time of day, there's a good chance you might not even be a snowboarder or anything. Yeah, could have changed know? the way you treated mm -hmm. people as well. Like, and I was like infatuated. I mean, I was like a, in Ohio. I mean, I was getting any snowboarding stuff I could go get. Like there was a shop I used to ride for called Sun Sports in Columbus. I used to go. It was like the true skate shop. You go hang out, watch movies, and you just do what skate shops used to be. Um, or I get like Sports Illustrated at the book fair had a snowboarding edition. I'd get that. I didn't, I just wanted anything with snowboarding. So these guys, then once I like met them, it yeah. was like I was game on. Number those are my idols. You know that's, that's all cool. I cared about. That's cool. cool. They cool. were so rad to you, man. That's sick. Yeah, I mean, I don't care what anybody says. Like those two, they're above everybody because oh, of that. Yeah, those dudes are the right best. there. The that's best. Sick. Okay, we're gonna get into an early section oh. we like to call. Name that video oh, part. Oh, snap. Are you good at this? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Major shout out to the Dew Tour, our sponsor of Name That Video Part. This guy's actually got a couple Dew Tour wins, I believe, or podiums. Or I got a lot titles. of wins. I got a th two overalls. They don't do the over. Well, the tour. Not it's a, not a tour anymore. Yeah, so there's not an overalls anymore, but I had two of them. So. Two-timer. So this is our first contest guy. <sighs> In the video part bracket. Oh, true. I'll be honest with you. I'm probably going to be the worst contest person at guessing the video part. Like, you'll probably have some people that are contest writers that will be really good. I'm not one of them. Okay. See, we'll see how well, Let's do. see how he does. Here we go. Do it again. If you have another chance, you can do it the same. The money, the women, the cars, the ride. The funny thing is, I know, I know, like, if we played the song, I'm like, oh, that's in a video part, but I can't think of who it is. I can't think of who it is. Either. Oh, that makes well, me feel hey, better, hey, at least. Dude, I'm the worst hey, at it. Let's leave it as a two-parter for the for the viewers, then. All right. You know what, though? You didn't get it right. But. We're still giving you a prize pack. What we got is a bomb hole igloo cooler. Oh, hell yeah. Wrapped. You got a couple goods in there. It's stacked full of stickers. And, I like that. And, uh, yeah, anyway. This is nice. You guys got a nice budget over here, dude. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, that was pro bono from uh, friend pro Ryan Kingman. Bono. Appreciate that. Thank you, Ryan. And then um, what else we got? Oh yeah, so the song we'll number two. The, we'll let the people answer two this time. Two chances. Two, for two parter backs. for the listener viewer. Here we go. Oh, uh, don't answer it. Don't. I know this one. If you know this one, then answer it. Uh, this was uh, Matt Hammer, right? Okay. Woo! All right. So he got white, one of them. Was right. it White Balance? Yeah, it's one of the standards. I actually don't because, know. Because uh, John Jay had a pretty hammer part. I think one of them had opener and one of them had closer See, in that one. this guy, one. you know, Son of an Angel. That's a classic song, too, It is. Though. You know what, though? You earned that prize. Yes, Thank you. There we go. I take that one. I like that. So the first song, then, will be for the guests yep. or the viewers. 
Yep, exactly. Did you know that one, Stoney? Uh, I didn't, dude. And uh, I'll tell you guys. Well, the funny thing is, how many movies me, have you made? It like, reminds me of the uh, the BMX movie Rad. That's what I go back oh. to. This end. I've seen Rad, but I don't. That song does not register. Or that isn't movie it, isn't for that me. the dance scene? Maybe I get the song. The, huh? the thing that's amazing about Buds is like he will be at the session. He'll witness the shit go down and not even remember. Yeah, it's horrible. That's what I'm saying. Like, if anybody, he's like, I don't. I'm so bad at this. I'm like, how many movies did you make again? Yeah. Like, dude, you could put FODT songs on and some of them all. I've edited the part and still <laughs> won't remember. I'm going to do the outro In music one ear, just out for the other. Fun. Well, before uh, we start, we mentioned the Dew Tour as a sponsor. We have another sponsor this episode. Oh, yeah. Let's talk heavy, about it. Heavy, heavy sponsor. Oh, gosh. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Blotto mm. Photo. Dean Blotto. You want to know something funny about that? What's that? You know who my first coach at Wendell's ever was? Really? Blotto. No way. Really? And I, uh, Blotto gets an air horn real Yeah. Way. And I always tell this story, too, because, well, there's a couple, because I was riding, like, a small Burton board, whatever, you know, and that you could demo brand new boards. And obviously the chopper was, like, the cool Burton board. So I was like, I want to try the chopper. And I think I actually got a size bigger because I just wanted to ride a board. You know, it was brand new. It was, like, mind-blowing. And I caught my toe edge, scorpioned, Sliced the side of my head open Ooh. and got like four or five staples in my head when Blotto like was, hit the when you scorp the board. The hit board you? hit me in the, and yeah, I have a dent a in my head from it. Yeah, so it's a true scorpion. And Blotto was my coach. My dad had Jim Smith. Shout out Jim Smith. He's still coaching the kids out in Colorado, which is cool. But Blotto was my coach, and he used to tell me he used to call us the low riders. Like you'd get us low and tell you to to grab you know grab your edges when you're turning. And you know he always has a story of why he's missing the tip of his pinky. Yeah. And, one of the stories he told me was he didn't let go of his edge fast enough when he was grabbing it really? when he was making a turn. <laughs> but, yeah, Blotto was my first coach. And I also, it's funny, I have photos of me hitting jumps at Wendell's he took on, like, my dad's disposable camera. So, really, I have some pretty OG Blotto photos. that was probably, photos. like, his first photos Such before a he was on a, on, a, on a little Kodak, whatever, that point and shoot sick. camera. Yeah, he made a one-time donation that basically is the same that a sponsor would pay, which is incredible. Yeah. True story about his pinky. He was wakeboarding. Jumping. Yeah, wakeboarding. Oh, really? I never knew. Doing that. that where you jump off the dock to get oh, dock started. Start. Dock, dock start. Dock start. The pin, it, the rope wrapped around it and just popped it right off. Oh my god! And then they pull in the rope and the pinky stuck to the rope, <laughs> and they uh, put it in a uh, cup with ice, airlift them from like uh, maybe Powell or something yeah. to the closest hospital. And he's always like, you see this pinky? I could have had a car because it's like ten grand to get airlifted. <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't reattach it. <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, because I heard that one, but he never actually told me if it was, like, true or not. Story. Yeah, so I'm like, story. he told me that, and he'd always just laugh because um, I was just with him. at the. He did a collaboration with G-Shock for a watch. Mm -hmm. So I was there for his little gallery oh, G-Shock thing. Yeah, it was super sick. But That was at the Open, right? Yeah, I always talked to him about the pinky story or when he was my first coach because he was on – uh, Scott USA mm -hmm. at the time. I rode for Scott with him. Yeah, first coach. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know Buds' move was cool. uh, Switch McTwist back in the day. You used to have those in the pipe. That's his shit. Well, why don't you still? Let's go. Dude, the pipes got too big. <laughs> I think we go. We get a GoFundMe going for a Buds <laughs> Switch McTwist. See what we can Bro, get we got to. the slant at Woodward Park City. We got the slanted landings. Oh, it makes it a little is? better. Yeah. yeah. All right, fuck it. I'll tell you, whenever Whatever. I see... <laughs> or airbag. <laughs> airbag it. That's Whenever, scary, whenever yeah. I see Vito at Hood... In the pipe, I always come through and try to flex a dick on a fat crippler just to kind Dude, of. He's got him. a pretty mean. I saw him bust one out in Finland. At, Me? Uh, didn't Where? you? In oh, the, riding the pipe. Yeah. Oh, at, at Tulma. Thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah that was super fun. Was I forgot just, about that. Just like last, not last season, but the one. Two, before, yeah, yeah. One before. That's a good trick, though. I was saying, I was saying earlier, like, so sometimes it's hard, like getting clips. And I was like, oh, I just do a crippler. That's the easiest one. You can poke it a hundred times and whatever, it's like slow mo, whatever. But that's like my favorite trick in a pipe is a crippler. Were it's just you, so chill. Were you involved from the transfer from when they got one size to the huge size? The yeah. 18 were you foot like, to 20 you went yeah. through that transition? Yeah. How was that, that crazy or what? Well, it was wild because, well, two things. One, they were still, so the Dew Tour in 2009 was 18. So I didn't do Dew Tour in 2009 because the qualifiers for the Olympics were 22 feet. And then going back and forth was trippy because if you got used to the 18, you would show up to the 22 You'd be mobbing. You're like, I'm going to go so freaking big right now. And you'd be like, ooh. Yeah. It was like so deceiving. So I just rode 22 in 2009. But 20, 2009 Dew Tour was 18. 
So it was like kind of going back and forth. The transition's just so much different. It was hard, huh? It was you just you weird. can't pop on the fat. You can't pop or you die. You just got to be like real patient. You f- you feel like you're gonna send it, and then you just keep going up the wall, up the wall, up the yeah, wall. It's such a big wall. I think yeah. it's like your pace of snowboarding is just a lot faster. Like you just yeah. have to be used to going way fucking faster. Because in the 18, you can kind of just cruise in. Yeah. Which would she like better? 22 probably because. The transitions are a lot more open, and I'm also more used to it, but you have more landing room. You know, you can kind of, like, build your speed. If you land a little low, you still have a lot of wall to yeah. kind of change your angle a little bit. Okay, I, I like, like, a hand dug six foot. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> when they first six cut foot. those, like, I love the mini pipe. Mini pipes are fun, but it's so hard to find a good mini pipe because I remember, like, Park City had one one year, and that thing was so f- quick. But yeah. then, like, you go to Hood and, like, Bodie's contest, that thing was dope. Like, yeah. it, you can actually oh, he, he actually did, uh, not not on the accolades, his first, the first double cork in a Maryland Invitational uh, halfpipe yeah. contest really? ever. Yeah, he this double guy. corked a mini pipe. Woo! Yeah, but and it was funny because Grendy's called me about going, and I was like, well, you guys are always normally haters on all of us pipe kids doing the contest. Like, no, no, you can do it. And then he said something to me about doing a double, and I'm like, I'm just thinking this dude's setting me up to get, like, well, like just he didn't ripped. want, like, a real pipe job. They in, never did. Don't let him say anything the different. Well, we they were overqualified. Yeah, yeah they never were. We were never up. allowed. But then he said something about <laughs> doing a double, and I thought he setting me up to, like, get made fun of, like, this jock dude You're shows like, up. And he said, then when he said, like, Bodie... Bodie ate shit and got broke off doing it. I'm like, okay, I'm definitely going to do one. Like, not because, like, Bodie, I, guess I was happy Bodie got broke off, but it was like, Bodie tried it, and Bodie's, like, a phenomenal snowboarder yeah. and also, like, has the respect of everybody. So that means if he did it, then I can go yeah, do it. And, trying to make you look Yeah, bad. and <laughs> then if I can land it, then it's like, that made me feel good because Bodie didn't land it, and Bodie's, like, a savage on a snowboard. The yeah. dude's a wizard, so. He is a wizard. But then you guys got, like, he got pissed, or you got pissed, or somebody got pissed, because I, like, did that. I rode for a while, and then I went down to the pipe and kept riding and never finished the, the contest. And I felt like somebody said, like, Who oh, got yeah. pissed? People are always looking to hate on Louie, man. They're always yeah, looking so. for it. They're looking you know for an angle. You know what I say about the haters? Fuck off, haters. No, I didn't care, because <laughs> I was like, hey, I had so much fun, and I rode so much. I did a double, whatever. I had a great time. But then I was like, I still want to go ride, like half pipe so i yeah. went down and rode the half pipe i felt so like i put in I, enough time I, I, I wanted to run back i wanted to run back because you know you and i grew up doing green mountain and it was like you were on forum you know you you got some sponsors and, and then at what po- some point like something just fucking clicked and you started like doing well in big contests and shit do you remember like a turning point or something you did or, um or like how old you were yeah. too well yeah so i don't know it's like i started kind of chipping away chipping away and a lot of my thing comes back to, again, the hard work part because, like, going to Stratton Mountain School, you know, you're with a lot of really good kids. But the I best. never really had that sponsor that was like, yo, Louie's our guy. We're going to blow him up. And there was people that I was friends with and I was around that, like, had that sponsor that's like, this is going to be our am. We're going to blow him up. And then – but I'm, I'm beating him in contests or, you know, I'm up there at least. Let's just say that. So I don't sound too arrogant, but like you're up there, but you don't have that sponsor. So it's like, you're always kind of like looked, not really looked at kind of in the shadow. So it was always like baby step, baby step, baby step, baby step. So for me, it was just like kind of trying to prove myself, I guess was part of it. And then kind of like once you crack, you know, get your first win or you kind of crack the seal, then it kind of like, I feel like your mind opens up and you're shooting for the first rather than like, I'm trying to make finals. I'm trying to make finals. You're really shooting for the top and then settling for underneath. And, you know, like I won nationals in open class and that gave me my first X Games start, I think 2006. I qualified second and ended up fifth. So then it was like, okay, wow, like that was cool. And then I didn't do well for X Games for a while after that. But I think then um, I just missed winning an overall Grand Prix to Tommy Shasheen one year, which would have been a truck. Tommy Machine, the machi- machine. The machine Shasheen. 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 I haven't heard that name in a minute. <laughs> yeah, me He's either. like a pro wake surfer now. He's insane oh, wake he really? surfer. Damn. Yeah. Uh, and then the next year I won the truck. So I think it's just like kind of seeing that what's possible. And then, you know, when I really went on a tear was after, Van- after Vancouver. And that was like, I think I missed, I was like 23. Two of twenty-five podiums. I made twenty-two of twenty-five. But that was podiums. The, the, the. Were you an Olympian for at the that Vancouver? Point. Yeah. You, okay. Yeah. But Vancouver was hard. The because half pipe looked like shit, huh? Yeah, it was decent the day of the contest, but we had so many practice days canceled uh, because of it rain. It like poured rain uh, the night before the contest. We were like, the pipe's gonna be gone by the time we wake up. But it was actually made it better. 
I always had a hard time. I thought I should have been top three there, which was kind of harsh on, I mean, that's just my Judging personal hard, thing. right? Yeah, but, I mean, it is what it is. So that one kind of was hard. But after that, I just went on a tear, which then led me to probably my more difficult year was, like, 2014 qual- 2013, 2014 qualifiers because, I, like I said, I, would, I pretty much podiumed at every event I entered, and I was doing so many of them every year. And then it just went to like, nope, can't get a score. My life depended on it. Damn. No matter what. And I had, you know, I stopped partying. I was working hard. I was in the best shape of my life. I was riding well. You know, I had McDonald's. I had TD Ameritrade. I had Smuckers. We're you know, talking about some biscuits here. Yeah. yeah. I had a McDonald's bag, a McDonald's cup, a McDonald's TV commercial, a TD Ameritrade TV commercial, like all this stuff. And then what like. kind of loot we We need to talk about the here, cheddar biscuits We did all right. You know, it was good. Can we get any numbers? But actually, can we try yeah, any we, numbers can we get I'll any just put it this way. It'd be, it's it's, you, it's, it's, in the past, it's right? not as big as you would think because like McDonald's is like, yeah, we're McDonald's. But my cup was the only cup that doesn't have a Coca-Cola logo on it because I was on Red Bull at the time. Too bad they didn't give you like a couple cents a cup that went Can out. we talk about I the think biscuits? My family would have though. taken most of them because I have a stack of them at my house. But like. I'm doing a. I mean, cur- are we talking like a hundred G's from McDonald's? Like, what are we talking? Yeah, no, are, it was are all right. people like to know this, the biscuits? He's dodging. He's <laughs> gonna dodge, dodge in the biscuits. Don't worry about he's it. Dodging the biscuits. Okay. Damn, son. But that was that was hard because I like I was doing runs nobody did, and I just got fourth place. What every, was it? Like, like front double? Yeah, Dude, probably. Yeah, amplitude. I can tell you your runs. It was like double Michael Chuck. Front 10 double, cab 10 double, routine. double, and then fat crippler back nine or double crippler no, back nine. I did nine. front dub 12, dub chuck, front dub 10, cab dub 10, front 10. Damn. A lot of times. Maybe I did double crippler at that one too. But, I mean, I had I had dubs unlocked. But, like, people at the time were doing double 12s last hit. I was, did it first hit. So, yeah, I mean, amplitude's obviously been the thing that has been, like, the thing that people love to say. You got to go bigger. But I've I mean, everyone like, loves to see amplitude, even though yeah. it's so dangerous. Those giant pipes. See, my thing is, I say, is like, it's a lot harder to as do a double cork under like smaller than it is bigger. <laughs> That's probably true. I know true. more people that can't do a double unless they're you know ten feet out. That's so true. I can huh? do a double out of a ham plant. Both Damn, of them. Dude. Both ham plants. <laughs> Acrobat. But, but it's funny because like that was like that was the hardest one because I like gave up so much. I was so focused. I was working so hard. I had all these sponsors, and then I just couldn't get a freaking score like writer's block or i something, remember not shredders d- block. and then to make it worse the pipe sucked in russia and i remember being at the open that so year deep. yeah and jake burton twice came up to me i have, not, I have no affiliation with burton other than i ride their bindings and said oh man louis you should have been in russia you would have killed it and i was like yeah i know really <laughs> but you didn't make it i didn't make it so what yeah. was the first olympics that i went to no the 98 Nagano. 98 so did you aspire to be in the Olympics, or is that something that just kind of I think happened? more 2002, because that 2000... Was DK, or is that DK? What, in 2002? Park City? Park City was Ross, Danny, JJ. Oh, two. 2 Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought, yeah. So I went to the Olympics. I had a friend at school, took my dad, me, a teacher of ours, a his family. Yeah, but flew us on a PJ out to Park Hold City. Hold on, tell, that, tell that, the layman's. I just found yeah, out what a is PJ, a PJ is. a PJ a private jet? Yeah. Woo! I heard Future talking about a PJ. I couldn't figure out what it was. I didn't. I just learned that right yeah. now. Yeah. Private jet, like, from, like, Rutland, I think we flew out. Rutland? Like, on Rutland a, to, on a PJ. To, like, yeah, Park City or Imagine something. Imagine getting a BJ and a PJ? <laughs> Woo! Bro, I was probably a lot, of B, a lot of BJs in the PJ. I mean, I might have got a BJ in eighth grade. I'm sure you probably did. <laughs> I did. So we were, so we were like, there yet. we had a, were. we had a, a condo right next to the pipe and we would literally wake, his dad left, his dad, his dad was a very successful like businessman from Israel and his dad left and we would wake up every day and there'd be new tickets on the table. I don't know how they got there, but there well, he was tickets. like out doing business and he just said, I don't know where, up. I don't know where he went. I don't, I think he went on a trip somewhere. He left or whatever. So we got to go and watch the, watch the, the pipe finals. And it's funny, uh, Terry Kidwell was there and I can't remember how it somehow I I recognized him and I got these like foam balls that gave us uh, tickets to the awards. So we hitchhiked. We my dad took <laughs> took my friend and me and our teacher and was like, "Your dad's probably not going to be down with this, but this is how we're going. We don't have a car, so we're going to get this." So we hitchhiked to Salt Lake to the awards. Oh wow! And saw the awards there. And I think you know a combination of the U.S. sweep. Um, but Ross went to Stratton Mountain School. I was going to Stratton Mountain School. Scott Palmer coached Ross. Scott Palmer was coaching me at the time. And it was kind of just like, oh, my gosh, like, that I could make it because, like, I'm going to the school that the one guy who just won went to my school, and his coach is coaching me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, my gosh. I can like, do this. I, this, could ha- this could be me. That's and then cool. um, I 
think I won my age group at nationals that year too. So it was like started. You were like, like, I yeah, went let's third do at this. Waterville. Pandora's box. I got yeah. third. I got Open. third at Waterville the year before. Was like the first time I podiumed. Like it was probably it was a big deal for Snow Ohio series. Man. Yeah, you got a podium, and then it was. I then I won the next year, and then it was kind of like okay, like I'm doing something right. Dude, what are your nerves like at the Olympics? Is that just crazy? Well, I feel like this would be a nice uh, segue for what I know is obviously going to be a topic of conversation, but at that point, I wasn't really that nervous because I just came off of from doing Dancing with the Stars. Oh, so damn. That, like, <laughs> Shouts to tiny, Dancing with the Stars. Tiny I could, dancer back <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah. You should have queued up a little tiny dancer on there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Dancing with the Stars was uh, fucking, dude, 22 we million Larger viewers? than life. Like, yeah. my... I remember being back east, and they're like, the people that knew I snowboarded were like, do you know who Louis Vito is? Like, everybody <laughs> yeah. was like, oh, you were like. Dude, you were a household name. Household yeah. name. Yeah, what was, was that cr- whole vibe, dude? Well, it was funny because the spring before, I had an, a friend of mine, this agent, said, like, would you want to do an interview for it? And I'm like, I don't even know anything about the show other than my parents watched it. And you I had knew, no dancing background, right? Heck no. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I knew Floyd Mayweather did it, and I love Floyd Mayweather, and Master P did it. Because I remember them, Ooh. like, he wouldn't wear dance shoes. He'd only wear his, like, Master P shoes. Sick. But I was like, okay, whatever. And I, I actually had a torn meniscus at the time, and we were filming at Super Park. So I was like... Well, at least this is my excuse if they ask me to dance. I don't know what they're going to ask me in an interview. Like, if they're going to ask me to dance, I got torn. My meniscus is so jacked, I can't even walk downstairs. But okay. So I did the interview, and I, like, it was a, probably the only interview I've ever walked out of where I was like, I felt really good about it. Like, I, I didn't, killed it. <laughs> there's like, not even like, I wasn't saying like, I'm definitely going to get it. It was just like, I answered everything. I didn't feel like, oh, I should have said that, or I should have said this. It was like, that was really good. It was on. And then they said, well, you know, they came back, like, we really like Louie, but he doesn't really fit with our season, so I thought they were going to wait and see how the Olympics went. And then when they hit me up, like, midsummer, uh, I was like, well, um, I don't know. Dad, what do you think? My dad's like, well, why don't you just say yes until you get the paperwork in front of you? I mean, that's when it's real because they can say whatever they want until the paperwork's in front of you. So I said, yeah, 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 boom, paperwork's in front of you. And I'm like, "Wow, oh, okay. So um, we're talking cheddar biscuits on that one, I Yeah, bet. yeah, that was, because you got to think. The do bisque an, is good. <laughs> they do enough to get, like, really big celebrities yeah, with all that, that are like, that would work. And for me, I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. With all that advertising, yeah, it's got to be a good yeah. contract. And so I remember I called Todd I called Todd Richards. I think I talked to somebody at Monster at the time and maybe somebody at Nike. I didn't talk to many people. But Todd was the one. Obviously, Todd's, like, king like shit talker yeah so todd was the one who's like yeah you just gotta be you know be able to make fun of yourself don't take yourself too serious and don't try to like come off as a certain anything just be you be yourself and it'll be fine because obviously we all know here that like snowboarding is gonna be like i mean david benedict put a picture of me in his book of like the not cool part of snowboarding really so i'm like i, I thought really it was dope well, i mean i don't really care because obviously i you know david benedict benedict took some some you know he he saw it so he took a picture of me and put it in his book. So yeah, thank true. you for putting me in your book. <laughs> That's actually you needed a good to get point. some more views. There you go. <laughs> yeah. But like, I mean, I just knew that was gonna happen. But Todd kind of like helped me be aware, but also like not deal with it, but just don't think about it and just make fun of yourself and be fine. It's kind of like what Kevin Hart always does, yeah, and get I do out now. In front like, of it. You just make fun of yourself. Like, okay, I know I'm five six. Like. I have heard every short joke there is, so I'll just say it before so you, you say it. So you put out this omatic <laughs> tiny dance. Yeah, I mean thing, that's like. Todd, of course. Yeah. So I think that's also incredible because there's a degree of vulnerability to be like, yeah, I'm going to go on like a formal dancing show. I have no dancing experience. It's on national TV, and I know all of snowboarding's going to hate on it. Yeah, fuck it. How much money? Yeah, yeah let's go. <laughs> well, see, my the <laughs> thing Jeff Goldblum's on your microphone. I noticed oh, that yeah, too. Oh yeah, Jeff Goldblum's been hanging. <laughs> Damn. That Shouts fly. to our fly, Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Yeah. So the the thing is though with 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 me was I thought okay. First off, we got to realize Twitter was brand new at this time. Oh, like, true. Brand new. This is 2009 fall. And so I learned front dubs in hood and that was like a big trick. Um and then I was going to New Zealand and riding there. I didn't learn cab doubles there, but first one to land front double 10 in a competition. <clears throat> I just want to throw that out there. Let's get that. I get the one. Okay. I dropped before Sean. Sean also fell first run, so I got that one in New Zealand. But the way I looked at it was, okay, you got 22 million people that watch the show a week. When I was on, it was the number one show, So, wow. but I didn't know. So my theory was, was a couple things. One, if I could be so far out of my comfort zone that anything else I do, if I go back to snowboarding, it's going to be a walk in the park. That's so true. 
So the way I say it is like, I'm doing a dance that I have no confidence in. I'm wearing clothes I'd never wear on Halloween. 22 million people watching at home, live audience, live judges. And I have no idea if the, what the judges are going to score me. I so, thought you looked good thank out there. You. Thank you. wearing a goddamn yeah. tuxedo or something like that? No, I wore like, like, like a dancing. I, I, wore, I guess you can't see. I wore like yes. sleeveless satin shirts. <laughs> yeah, it's like satin. <laughs> yeah. You look good, though. I remember that crazy dancing outfit. But, so, to but, then, but then like then I go to snowboarding. I'm wearing what I want to wear. When they say, like, go, you're like, okay, I go. Get my song. Tighten my bindings. I'm good. I know what the judges want. I know what I'm doing. I have confidence. That made it easy. And the other side was, you know, I got all these people that – and I'm not going to name names, but, like, I got these people that I know that, like, were hating. But the thing I thought is, like, if I could take less than 1% of 22 million people and introduce them to snowboarding, that's, that's a huge. lot of people into the industry. Okay, well, those that percent's not going to just buy my stuff or just contest rider stuff. Like, they might go buy your most core, hardcore snowboarder, you know, Brian Fox snowboard. Yeah, well, like guess what? I'm putting money in your pocket. You're doing everyone I don't, a favor. I don't care. Like, my thing was just to get people in snowboarding because that helps the industry as a whole. If you're a filmer, I'm still helping you get money. If it's a contest kid that's getting a, you know, a royalty or something, I'm helping put money in his pocket. All I'm trying to do is build snowboarding up because without people buying stuff, then we're not getting paid and to do what we that. love so to that's, do. That's cool. So that's the way that I looked at it. And, you know, I have people that would say, like, oh, well, you know, if this sponsor, like Taco Bell, sponsoring the X Games, like that's whack. And it's like, why? Their money's green. All you got to do is take their money, but have creative control and control how they sp how you spend their money. And then you can use that money. It's not like, to me, it was never selling out. It's like cashing in. You know, like you bust your ass in how many concussions or broken bones and everything you have. Like, you deserve to make as much money for doing what you're doing as you can. And I'm not saying like you're going to be yeah. wearing like some kooky stuff and like really sell your soul but i'm saying like if you can get paid get paid and and that's the thing that i always disagreed with in snowboarding because snowboarding i thought a lot of people did because there was no rules everybody hated snowboarders it was like you know the rebellious thing but now we're in a world where it was like oh you're a contest jock you're a pipe jock uh this is wrong if you want to have fun don't do contests it's like why if if you want to just go ride the mountain ride a mountain. if you want to ride a, a board and just carve like a carving board Bro, you're still on the. You're still, you're still out there. You're still you're riding. Running. You're still enjoying snowboarding how you want to enjoy it. And that was like always the hard thing that I, I like. Kind of kept my mouth shut on. I did a yo beat thing and kind of talked about it. But it was like, why? I I don't care like how you snowboard. Like there's kids who style that. I'm not really a fan of their style. But like, bro, they're ripping. They're doing stuff that I can't do. I give them props, and it's like. Do you because it's that snowboarding. Snowboarding is doing it how you want to do it. And at the end of the day, we're all enjoying snowboarding however you want that to be. We need more inclusivity. So, yeah, like exactly. That. That's yeah. that's the interesting thing. Talk about I was thinking the same thing with inclusivity. It's like snowboarding's supposed to be this inclusive thing, right? But within snowboarding, the the you know, the turn guys don't associate with the rail guys. The rail guys don't associate with the backcountry guys. The backcountry guys don't associate with the contest guys. And they all fucking, you know, and girls, I should say. And they all kind of player hate on each little segment in their own thing when it's like, dude, fuck, yeah, Louis, get his bread. Like, do your shit. You but know? see, that's the thing. It's funny, too. It's also because, like, I remember we had a Red Bull camp, and this was like Anna Gasser was like, I don't even think she was on Red Bull. But the pipe sucks, so a lot of us were just jumping. And, like, she, I remember she was, like, blown away. She's like, how come so many of the pipe guys can all jump, but not a lot of the jump guys can ride pipe? Now, there's a lot of pi jump guys who can ride pipe really well, but that's the thing that people don't understand. Like, a lot of those pipe kids can ride jumps really well, can ride pow really well. Yeah. Rails, not as much. Now, I did have a rail part. Okay, but... I've seen it. In Clancy's movie. But I did I did went on a full rail trip through Eastern Europe, <laughs> but... uh I, I mean, sh I shot you on a dumpster once too. I yeah, I also that bit my tongue. Salt Lake. Bit, oh, my, yeah. bit my tongue on a gap one, and then <laughs> I had the clothes out where I on the dumpster, and I didn't make the clothes out. But you guys had a couple video parts. Can yeah, yeah. Can but, I mean, no, but it's like again, it's like who cares? Like, yeah. do snowboarding the way you want to do snowboarding. But it's just funny. I remember I always give James Jackson crap about it because you know he was head digger at High Cascade, and I'm like, I would show up, and you had all the diggers all in black, and you're like, have to go check in. You ride in like. Hey, uh, just checking in, and they would just sit there and stare at you for like a good five seconds. Such a power move. Yeah, and the then be like, "Love that, <laughs> you're good." And I'm like, "Yeah, I know I'm good." <laughs> Thank you. But, <laughs> I mean, the funny thing is, because at the time, like I've known Kevin English 
since I was on Sims when I was a little kid, and he was on Sims. I've known Tim Wendell since I was eight years old. Wow. Um, I mean, I've like, you want to go talk to your boss? Go talk to your boss. Yeah, like, I know I'm getting in. But here. I'm like, I'm being <laughs> polite. But they just or like they'd show up to the pipe like getting ready to rake, and they'd be like, "Do a double, do a double," and I'm like, "Rake the pipe, rake the pipe." <laughs> like, I mean, I'm not I never would say that, but I'm just saying. Like, just at the time, it was just salt, like, though, you know? well, it, yeah, literally, literally. <laughs> they love but to throw it's just the like salt. shoot it out of the salt gun, throw <laughs> it all. That's like all it used to be. Like, just like, why do you care what I'm doing, dude? Like. Leave me well, alone. But when, you, when you're like kind of getting all kinds of shine, you got a target on your back. That's yeah. how it always is. Well, I was going to say about Dancing with the Stars, I think any one of them who gave you shit, if they had that contract in front of them with the money and shit, they would sign. Yeah, let's go. Well, you know the funny I mean? thing is, the, so back to that, though, like I thought like, cool, I'm, I can learn these dance steps. But I learned really fast that – just because you do the steps doesn't mean you're dancing. True. And that w- threw a curveball at me because the flavor, I was right? like, wait a second. But, bro, we were doing like six plus hours, eight hours minimum a day. Like, we would do the show on Monday. Tuesday, get the new dance if because you, you found out if you made it or not. You would start like Tuesday night or Wednesday. I would YouTube like, okay, we're going to do the rumba, whatever. I got to learn that in like four days. That's like, crazy. are you kidding me? So then Friday... They would come into your practice because you're filmed. You're mic'd up and camera rolling the entire time you're practicing. There's no, like, I'm going to go eat lunch. Like, everything's filmed because they want everything to make a package. So they come in. Their partner would be like, okay, this is the, you know, this is the stage. The judges are here, crowd, whatever. And then you'd, you're learning on a, on a CD, and you'd go through it. You can mess up, but as long as you had the gist of it. Saturday, practice. Sunday, go in, and, sh- and you'd shoot with all the boom cameras on set. Everything. And then, but that's when all the producers were there. So you're like kind of nervous. You kind of had to have the, the really down nice. by then. Yeah. Go back, practice Sunday, Monday, get up, had a dress rehearsal in the morning. That was the first time you had like the band playing. So I never counted steps. I would just listen to the music. So CD versus a live one's very different. Ooh. Not to mention you had to rely on your partner to be like, can you speed it up a little bit? Or you're a little slow or whatever it is. Like there was different things that she would notice that was different than the CD. And she was a pro. Yeah. Yeah. So then, then you go and you're chilling and then you kind of do the intro. And it was funny because every time we'd walk down, they were clapping Louis professional snowboard, Louis Vito and his partner, Chelsea Hightower. Okay. Everyone's clapping and you line up and I'd always get lined up next to Michael Irvin, always lined up next to him. <laughs> so you're, you know, you got crowd all around you. All right. They finish and they, you know, they, they get the crowd going and then they're like, okay, cut. And he would always slap me in the butt every time. Be like, let's go, Louie, and slap me. And his hand was so big, it would, like, pick me up off the He'd ground. Like, palm your butt. And he would just, he would just, <laughs> lie. he was so stoked. And I remember one time, like, it was interesting to see, like, how he prepared, you know, how many Super Bowls has he been to. Uh, Chuck Liddell prepare and how many, you know, he's a fighter and you didn't think he'd get nervous. He's, like, shadow boxing in the corner. Like, really? Just everybody, because everyone's out of their comfort zone, at least athlete-wise. And I remember Michael Irvin's like, man, I love this show. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, what other show can you wear what you're wearing, dancing with these skintily, you know, like scantily cl- yeah, clad good. girls, girls look good. and have your wife in the front row being like, yay, honey. <laughs> like, that was his favorite part of the show. But, uh, yeah, it was like, it was just a whole new world. Because, again, when they say you're going, or like when they an- introduce you, that music starts you're going. Snowboarding, it's like, all right, we're live, Go. I'm like, okay, tighten my tighten bind, up, yeah. do your get routine. my stuff ready, yeah. sign of the cross. This one, like, you're going. Mm-hmm. So you were, uh, I imagine, were more nervous to dance than to drop in at the end. Oh, my <laughs> gosh, bro. I was, and the thing is, too, is, like, then I finished, the, a lot of the routines I'd finish, and I'm like, cloud nine, bro. I'm just like, whoa, I just crushed that. And they're like, you did this wrong and this wrong and this wrong and this wrong. I'm like, damn. If you guys could see me in practice, you'd be like, this guy has made Kill leaps it. and bounds. Yeah since then so That's it's just so like cool. do, do you think that the self-discipline that came from snowboarding uh that you've practiced just from knowing you actually i'll back it mm. up like you've always been very regimented worked really hard this guy's diet is insane like the thing about contest people they don't realize is that i mean i'm only speaking from knowing you in this department but it's like you got to the stage. conditions the conditions are shit it's icy, it's windy, it's awful, you're still going. It's like no matter what, you got to be prepared. So that like insane preparation, right, that probably tied back in. Well, right? it's funny because my dad, when it comes to contest, he's like, well, everybody has to ride that half pipe, and they're still going to you know, pretty much give somebody a win. You know? So it's yeah. like, suck it up. But with Dance with the Stars, what was hard was, A, I'm 21, so I'm like, you know, you're kind of like, 
the, you know, you don't really know how to necessarily, your partner's the same age and you're kind of like butting heads a little bit. But also it's like snowboarding, if you get mad or you get frustrated, you can go take a lap. You can go work on a new trick. Um, you can call it and come back tomorrow, whatever it is. I had none of those because I had to learn this dance, but I didn't really know how to get rid of my frustration because you're in a room with your partner and then a filmer and a producer and that's it. And you're just going because you got to learn this dance. If you don't learn it, well, that sucks because you're still going to be on live TV and 22 million people are going to watch and you you're just look fail. Crazy. Yeah, and you're, and you're like, booted. yeah, I mean, like, you have to learn. So it was like really, that was difficult, like dealing with your frustration mm -hmm. because I didn't know how to do that. And your partner wanted to do well, I'm guessing. So yeah, and then, but you know, for her, I was only her second partner that she's had. Um, her first partner was Ty Murray, who was like rodeo god. Oh damn. Um, but you know, again, it's like for her, I think it was also like. I don't want to be a professional ballroom dancer. We need to like have like something that's fun and kind of the complete package, and that's what we why we you, did well. You guys seemed like like the off camera stuff. I remember watching. You guys had a good rapport. Like you were laughing, making jokes. Seems yeah. like you kept it like lighthearted. Oh, and it was great. Like that's why we did so well because we had such a good relationship, and you could and we weren't fake about it. Like what you saw in our packages was real, and we really. I mean, I'm still close with her. That's cool. So I mean. That was real, but that's what survived because, like, I was getting beat by people that would trip and stuff. Like, Did, they yeah. ripped me one time because my jacket was baggy, and I'm like, "Come I on, don't, I don't design my clothes. <laughs> yeah, like, like you know, I didn't have nothing you, to do with that. Don't they give you the clothes? Yeah, and then they're just, like, your clothing's too baggy. Then, like, the first one, they said my hair was covering you my look ears, like a and this, I'm like. You're not paying me that much to cut my hair. Like I'm, a, you wanted a snowboarder, you got a snowboarder, but how are you gonna take off points? Cause my hair's long. That's messed up. So then I started slicking it back and had like all these alter egos so and the stuff. Tough judges, huh? Yeah, but I mean, it was it was really it was like I wouldn't change it for the world. I would do it in a heartbeat again. In fact, when they were doing like these all star ones, I was like, let me do it. I'm like, well, I never made it to the finals, so they, that's why I didn't get to invite. Oh, it's it back. all about the finals. Yeah, or like yeah. winners and stuff like that. Yeah. But I mean. But I was mad so you when had I a lost. Blast, then. Yeah, I mean, in the people, like we had such a great group of people. Like it's like elimination style, right? Yeah, Every but like our season was the biggest season. We had two people gone the first week. Now they don't even kick people off the first week. We had two dances we had to learn the first week. But like we had such great like stars, I guess that would be on there. But as well as like the pro dancers, like uh, Max and Tony, like those both were pro dancers, and like they were awesome. And Max, like Max came, Max Tony. And I maybe even Max's brother Val, who's like a stud on the show. I think they even came out to X Games one year. That's and let sick. me tell you, like when, because the guys lead the girls. We were at the Target house like after party, and I just remember like those guys could grab any girl on the dance floor like in this private house party and like dance them around. And I mean, that is a skill to have because girls were just like girls swooning over them. I mean, granted, it's you an know, aphrodisiac. Like, yes. I, sometimes I think about like somebody like Chris Brown. Yeah. Imagine him just going, just like going to the club and just being be able like, to bust like that. Yeah, so, like, like, these guys are, like, trained in, like, every kind of dance possible. I mean, Max is from, I think, like, Ukraine or something. You know, that's what they're bred to do. But anything, just boom. The girls don't even know what's going on, and they just turn, and you would think that they were, like, partners for a lifetime. He just dancing. knows how to lead them. Oh, it was insane. And, like, every girl would leave and just, like, smile. I'm like, oh, Did my gosh, that? bro. <laughs> like, these guys are just... Tearing up X Games right now. Damn, dude. that's awesome. Um, speaking of, uh, are you? No, you go ahead. You go speaking ahead. of X, what's yeah. up with Triple X? Vin Diesel movie. Oh, I, mean, I just never was into those. I'm a Fast and the weren't Furious you, guy. Weren't you? Weren't you? No, in I was in movies? Point. Oh, point that's break. what I meant. Point Break. <laughs> oh, it was Wrong Point Break. <laughs> Wrong okay. movie. Point Break. That was cool. They like hit me up, um, and I said I'll do it, but I want a line. So I think they like wrote in my line, but I ended up flying out there with Costin. Costin and I were on the. We flew out together. And it was sick. Like, we flew out, you know, like... Point Break remake. That's yeah, right Yeah, remake. Now. Not, okay. it's, which is hard to redo a cult classic. I watched it. I was hyped yeah. when I saw you. So you had <laughs> girls around you and stuff like that? Yeah, like, walking in. But the thing is, is, we just... We, like, we shot... We stayed at this cool spot. It was, like, right across from the lake. And, like, they had farm fresh everything at this, like, hotel. Kostin and I, and we, like, went there at night. And we just, like, shot their scene in the evening. And then we, like, left. I think we did it two nights. But we stayed on U.S. time. And it was just chill. Like... Aoki was there, but the best part about Aoki is I went and met up with him the next morning. I was supposed to because I was like, let's go like swim and stuff. And he was like sleeping, but he left. He had a fill in, like he had like a a body double what? for part of his stuff because he like shot like 
the face shots, and then they just had like an Asian guy with a long wig, like it was like for the back <laughs> stuff. And I was like, wow, that's that's, that's the way some to do it. Star status right there. Dude, but like you a line in the movie. Uh, yeah, I said. Let's, uh, let's get a. Can we said, get a? Uh, hold on. Let's get a little little preview of this line. Said. Check out what my boys did in Mumbai. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. With the phone. Then you were like walking through the party. Yeah, or with something. my arm around yeah, the girl. Yeah, with my arm around a chick. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. You still Dude. got it, man. You I know. Thank you. It. Oof, you know stressed. what's the shit about hanging out with Louie, though? Is like Louie hits me up one day. He's like, hey, I'm going snowboarding. Like, I'm going with like Steve Aoki, whatever. Yeah, you're I'm like, like, what? <laughs> first of all, I had no fucking idea who Steve Aoki oh, was. You did. <laughs> 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 Dude. I was like, cool, man. We go up to the mountain, and, like, I think he did, like, a 360 or something. Dude, yeah. we, we were, like, it was so fun. And then we go to his show later, and I'm like, holy shit, this dude is, like, super famous. He's, like, a techno DJ. Yeah. And That's we went huge. on his tour bus and hung out on this tour bus, and I'm hanging out. It's just, like, you hang out with Louie. Next thing you know, mm -hmm. you're just, like, boarding with Steve Aoki. Is How it, did you meet him? Like, is that just uh, from Dancing with the Stars? No, or? I've known... The funny thing is, I've known Aoki for so long. I was trying to think of when I met him, but I didn't go to one of his shows for a really long time. But I saw him. He played the party uh, the night after our final... Or the night of our finals, or the night after we went out in, in Vancouver. And he was DJing that party, too. But I don't even remember where I met him. No shit. Just through friends. You just... Dude, big after, the like show, that, yeah. after the show, went home, just started bumping... Aoki, like, really? You're dude, like, dude, I, I got I super into like guy, techno after. Yeah. We we're teaching How? him like tripods and stuff. Yeah. How like, did you flips meet the Osbournes? So, we always had mutual friends, but I actually got close with Kelly from Dancing with the I Stars. I heard you were great. Oh, she was on the same. Yeah, year? she was on the same uh. season, and it was like kind of like we both recognize like you're real, I'm real, and also we had a mutual friend too that kind of like, oh yeah, I know Juge, you know Juge. All right, cool, and so we just like started kicking it hard. Then and so it's been. A so she's pretty then. down to earth. I mean, yeah, it's just, she's like how she is. Like, yeah, she's not really fake. Like you watch the show, that's how she is. She she'll tell you straight up. Like if she doesn't like something, she'll tell you. Like that's there's rad. no fakeness with her, at least with our relationship. And what about Ozzy? Uh, he's got a fun little story. Oh uh, yeah, Ozzy's the Ozzy and actually I love Sharon the most. Obvious. Oh, af actually after Kelly, but like Sharon's the best. I mean, I love her to death. Ozzy's always been great, and it was funny. I was over at their house one day. And, you know, Ozzy's always doodling. And um, I was talking to him about it, and he was like, yeah, it's just good for my mind to just, like, to just draw around. And he's drawing, like, these, like, a bunch of, like, these devil heads that are, like, more morphing into, like, a more defined devil head. And I said, what do you do with these when you're done? And he's like, oh, I'll just put them over here. And I'm like, well, if you ever want to, like, sell one or something here, he's like, here, you can have this one. And I was like, oh, sick. I was like, well, will you sign it to me? Because then you know I'm not going to sell it. Like, this is just for yeah. me. And he wrote, like, two ooey, O-U-I-E, <laughs> like, uh, what did he say? He said something about the devil or whatever, but the devil knows best. And then, like, Ozzy. And I remember I showed Kelly. I was like, oh, look what your dad gave me. She's like, oh, my gosh, that's so cool. And I was like, but he made it two ooey. And she <laughs> felt like we were right in front of her apartment door. She fell to the ground laughing so hard. Two ooey, <laughs> like, the devil <laughs> knows best. And I was like. Should I have you like run an L? She's like, no, that is so amazing. Yeah, I love that. Amazing. And um, and so there, I mean, I've spent a lot of time like when I got back injections one one time, um, Kelly came and picked me up at a hospital because I couldn't Uber and I needed a ride. So you guys are tight. Took me to to the house and like chilled and like she's always even if she's not home, like I can I always stay at her place or whatever. And she's always just had my back and that. And same with her with her mom and dad and her brother. Um, they've but all been super. Imagine if super your dad great. was fucking Ozzy Osbourne. Imagine if Ozzy was on the show. <laughs> so the thing that's crazy though. Get him to sign some prints and see what names we he probably puts sell on a him. couple of prints. So that's the thing. So like I also for New Year's I was in L.A. for the Ohio State, um, the Ohio State bowl game. I'm brain farting right now. Uh, uh, the, Rose the Rose Bowl. Yeah, the Rose Bowl. And my dad came out because that's like my one trip. I take my dad because I, get, mm. you know, I got a lot of friends at Ohio State and. Um, they were doing Ozfest for New Year's Eve, so I took my dad to Ozfest, and it was like Marilyn, um, Corn. No, Jonathan. Jonathan was playing from Corn, but Corn didn't play. It was Marilyn. It was Rob Zombie and Ozzy were like the three Damn. big names at it. So I took my dad out there for, and we went to Ozfest for New Year's Eve, Rose Bowl for New Year's Day. So that was pretty insane. And like wow. again, it's just like they. Kelly's always had my back and like yeah you need tickets. she loves she my just puts I mean you on she, the list. they know my family from Dancing with the Stars as well oh yeah that um, makes sense so like I mean it's it's not like 
oh yeah, can you get my dad? But they know my dad and we all know each other. And it's like, you're spending that much time with somebody you've got, you get close with them. Yeah. So it was cool. Cause Kelly gave me the award for the most awesome athlete at CW. Thing. Oh, but she that, did. That was like something cool. But Kelly's always like looked out for me. Like, okay, Louie, well, I'll take you to this showroom and this showroom. We'll get you like clothes to wear and da, 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 da. Or like somebody's cutting her at the house and they're like, oh, I'll give you a haircut if you want one. Boom. I got like the best there. hairdressers ever. Like cutting yeah. my hair. Like, I mean, she's just always like have my back. So that's like my, like, Probably one of my best girlfriends forever just because, again, kind of like the Jeremy Jones JP, like, just always being there for me, and there's not a lot of people like that. And then, like... Especially in Hollywood, right? I yeah. I imagine. And then you have, like, Melissa Joan Hart was on my season, and she was like, oh, I've been wanting to meet you. I was like, who, me? Because she's a big snowboarder. Oh, wow. She used to date Johnny Mosley back in the day, I guess. I but she's that. like, they got a house in Tahoe, and she was a big snowboarder. So that was cool. And then, you know, we got along, and then Chuck... Live below me, Chuck Liddell. You gotta, Chuck you, Liddell, you gotta yeah, use sorry. the full name. He always yeah. uses the celebrity, the, the Ice the, Man. The first name. So Chuck Liddell <laughs> lived below me because we had an apartment. They give you an apartment. Oh, they uh, do when you're out there. Yeah. You get so a you can apartment. either I can either fly back and forth between like where you live and the show. And they but you would always fly had you. yeah, or you but you always had the apartment. So I just stayed in the apartment because yeah. it was like fire spot. And so like Chuck Liddell and his brother Dan, they live below me. So I got really close with them and hanging out. Um, Michael Irvin. Was, uh, was awesome because the best thing about Michael Irvin, and, and I, I like to put myself on blast because it's funny. I, I go to this event, this red carpet event called Sports Spectacular. It's like a fundraiser thing, and I see Michael Irvin's doing, like, the red carpet. And so I, like, run up to him. I'm like, yo, Michael, what up? And, again, you got to realize how big this guy is. Grabs me around and kisses me on the cheek. And so hard, like, my face is like this. He's a and, huge human being. Yeah, and all I'm like, my eyes are squinting because he's squeezing me so tight, and all I just <laughs> see the flashes, pop, 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 pop. I'm like, oh, gosh, this is going to be an embarrassing <laughs> He's all squishing I mean, face. I probably even have it on here, but, dude, he's just like, everybody was so good. I mean, that's what I think. You that, rocked the Super Bowl rings when he was out all the time? He's run the, wear those things around? Uh, we might have to look at the photo. If you Let's find see. the photo, too, we could always cue it up on the video. I mean, yeah, like I said, like it's. I mean, you can. It's pretty easy to dude, find, but it's just so. This dude's homies. He's got. He's got MGK. He's yeah, how Machine do you, Gun how do you Kelly. Mean, That's is his this boy. Just from hanging in Lil LA. John. Who well, else? I mean, M- or Yellow Wolf. hanging with Ioki. Ioki, yeah. Well, it's just Ioki. A- Ioki. <laughs> How's it? Ioki. 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 Ayahuasca. Is uh, MGK the super tall one? Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. Machine, yeah he's, he's, he's white, and he's been acting. There you go. Yeah. Lately. See, that's what I, that's what I was saying. Oh my like, God! You look like a baby in this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we flash it over yeah, here. so sick. Well, you do look like a little baby. You look like a little baby. Well, in well, that. like 2011. You know, I was a baby then. We'll have to we'll have to lay that Machine over. Machine Gun Kelly has been killing it in some yeah, movies. Yeah, I mean, he's crushing. He I was mean, in that new one with uh, the Staten Island one, right? Oh, I haven't seen that one, but yeah, he's really good friends with Pete Davidson. Yeah, and he was in that super good one where uh, some sci-fi one on Bird Box. He was that in one Bird was Box. Dope. He was yeah. in the Motley Crue movie. Oh, that's right. Dude, this that's, guy's probably that's spent cool. some time on some PJs, I'd imagine. Then he yeah. has for sure. What you about must have Louis? Too. He's I, have, I have it not as much as I'd like to. I mean, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> I can see a Vito PJ with the logo on the oh, side. That's expensive, man. That'd that be nice, would be though. nice, dude. This dude. guy's got some good sponsors. We're talking Toyota. Yeah, you still how have you, these you got an agent? Yeah. How does that work? No, how do you no get agent. these fat sponsors? I've man? just had good relationships. Then my thing is like, it was always trying to. Once I got to a point financially, I feel like more so, I was really making sure that I got along with the brand. They understood what I wanted to do. I understand what they want to do, and we work together because, I mean, I've been bent over by some of the biggest companies and, you know, just had to eat eat it, you know, and I'm just like, Yeah, some of them whatever. are real good at it. Yeah, and so it's like, at that point, you know, you kind of just, or there's times where, like, I think I could have done more with like certain aspects of my life outside of snowboarding, but they're like, we only care about snowboarding. It's like, okay, but we could do so much more. Um, but making sure that you kind of have a partnership more than a sponsorship. So, you know, with Toyota, like I try to do anything and everything I can do with Toyota from obviously snowboarding, but like if you're having a meeting with executive, I'll go talk, I'll go hang out. I'll go to a, a NHRA drag race with Antron Brown, who's one of their drag racers. And we'll go shoot something together and kind of cross promote moto and, like motorized sports and, and action sports. But also, I want to go meet and do this stuff. Like, I got to stand, like, so close to a drag race car and, like, 
close enough when you're holding your phone, they tell you to hold on tight because you feel it hit you in the chest. You really? feel the heat. Otherwise, like, your phone's going to... The guys, like, you know, the, the, the mechanics and stuff are, like, having you dip your hands in the nitro or whatever it's called and, like, put it in your mouth because it's, like, you know, pretty much just straight alcohol. Like, really? Like, and then there's mechanics, like, scooping it. Like, yeah, it's safe. And you're, like... Oh, really? Right. They're scooping the it's like moonshine, or what yeah, are we it's talking? Much, it's like you know, whatever, like their fucking <laughs> rocket fuel is. Okay, <laughs> that's crazy. But then you know, I, I went on a fishing thing in Mexico. Uh, what was I like? It wasn't last year. Was it last year? No, two years ago maybe. I went down to Mexico and I went bass fishing for this like TV show that's that was like started on YouTube and then it was like you know they have like it's been on a few TV stations now, but it was a fishing competition show. I'm like, cool, like, I don't, I mean, cool. I Do mean, you whack I just, any fish, or what are we yeah, talking? I caught, like, a, Which, I didn't catch the. Catch a brown trout? I caught a, <laughs> I caught a, like, a five and a half pound bass down Woo! there. Bass hunter. Woo! But I was, like, the worst fisherman. Like, they're, like, well, how, what kind of fisherman are you? I'm, like, I mean, I fished. I'm an yeah. amateur. I, I fished. <laughs> I've been, like, bobbing fishing. Yeah. But I'm with dudes, like. My partner was an ex NFL player. He's got like five fishing boats. One Randy for each Moss is big part. into fishing. Was it Randy Moss? No, but okay. Warren Sapp is too. Yeah, um, I know Warren Sapp. He's a he's a good guy. Dude, you meet all these people. Um, it's insane. But he but like everybody there was like fishing guide, YouTube fisherman, and then you had me. Like I bobber fished. I know <laughs> bobber anything. fisherman. Yeah, like <laughs> but like threw you a know, bobber in a lake and just chill. try to do whatever I can do for them because a I get to do cool stuff and they have their sponsor so many different things that. You it have stokes access them to out, right? Cool. Yeah, and it's like, little did they know, I'm stoked to do this stuff. And now, especially, I'm a big supporter of the Paralympics, and uh, Toyota's the biggest sponsor of the IOC and the USOC, International Olympic Committee, US Olympic Committee. I got to practice saying that because <laughs> I'm not, you know, there's, that's contest terms. But their main thing is sponsoring so they can close a gap between the Paralympics and the Olympics of as far as, like, viewership and people understanding that Paralympics is not Special Olympics. Those are different but also Toyota is moving from an automobile company to a mobility company. So creating wheelchairs that can climb stairs, creating things like if you have a stroke and your leg doesn't work well, you know, so it helps your leg move. So they're putting, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars into, a, you know, technology to help people really get from point A to point B, wheelchairs not just a car. Wheelchairs go upstairs, that's crazy. Yeah, so they're just developing all that. And like a lot of their athletes, um, Paralympic and Olympic athletes, like, you know, you have access to go meet with engineers and figure out how to make products better, even from like wheelchairs and stuff like that. And that's something that that's I'm sick. really passionate about because it's a bigger picture. Yeah, right? that's like, like the future right there. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and to have a brand that, you know, they're a founding sponsor of, of Dutor. So you have a sponsor that's Dutor like. Dutor does big Paralympic stuff. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. yeah. And, Shouts and to Dutor for that too. And see, that's the thing. It's like they're a, they're a non snowboarding company. But they're not just writing the check. They're involved, and they've been supporting for a really long time with, like, the, the Dew Tour, for instance. And they yeah. have so many different athletes, I mean, between filmers and contest riders and this sport and that sport and, like, sports you probably didn't even know were sports. I mean, they're very involved in it. And then, like, G-Shock I've been with forever, and that's been really been really is that cool. what this watch is you got here? Yeah, this is I a was G-Shock. noticing that thing looked dope. Yeah, gold, thanks. The gold hog. Yeah, and then... Um, the gold hog. They call that thing the gold hog by any chance? They should no, call should, that though. the gold hog. This is, I just like this frame. This is like the classic, but they just put a heavier twist on it now. Okay. Nice. And then uh, Melon and Ethica. Melon makes awesome hats, and we're trying to create like uh, a beanie with them that you know I like that is like a higher-end beanie, I guess. Good material. Same with their hats. Like this hat's waterproof it floats it doesn't lose really? its shape i wear it in the lake all the time and i mean take it off what about the visor beanie you were talking about as a kid yeah, yeah no, you i should maybe bring it bring that, that back, back. Yeah, everything we're, comes we're back we're just starting yeah. i know seriously yeah. everything somebody does. needs to make you a good visor it's beanie. come back yeah and then you, ethica's you like it. ethica i pretty much still malcolm wear, running ethica? no oh, okay but uh matt cook he's kind of like really blown this thing up i mean they have like the mixtapes they've been doing they have a record label now they have a studio in their office as well but like everything I'm wearing, I have socks, underwear, sweatshorts, t-shirt, normally my masks. Everything is Ethica, um, which is has just been great too. So and, you just keep these and Wiener Schnitzel, of course. So if you guys want to go to Wiener Schnitzel, dude, you're down I'll with Wiener Schnitzel, dude. Yeah, man. For That's, real? Yeah. Dude, I'm trying you, to get that. You did all fat. this without an agent? Yeah. That's insane. I mean, most of them like G-Shock. I went up to way back in the day at U.S. Open to Surf. Yeah. Um, I would. 
Uh, sorry to interrupt. Toyota, I guess Todd Hahn had a good relationship yeah, with them Todd for a while. Was your agent. I mean, Todd's helped me with a lot of my deals, but a lot of them, you know, I, I just, I, I don't care. What's the worst they're going to say is no. Yeah, exactly. That's dude, a- I'm trying to slap a fat ass Wiener Schnitzel sticker on the nose of my board, dude. Yeah, let's do let's this go. on the bomb hole, dude. Tell him about the bomb hole. Send him the episode. Bro, my boy JR probably watches. He's like, he's, I grew up snowboarding with him. He's from, he grew up riding in Aspen and, um, Lego you know, and I were. Do you know what I wish there. about Wiener Schnitzel? I wish they actually sold Wiener Schnitzel from Germany. Oh, you know, when people when I go to Europe, people are like Wiener Schnitzel, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, yeah, it's hot dogs in the states. They're yeah, like, they're like, huh? Huh? Yeah, I, no, exactly. I love German Wiener Schnitzel. So but I'm down with the U.S. version. Oh, too, but so. I just love their chili cheese dog, chili cheese fries. <laughs> they did a thing on. It was like National Hot Dog I'm Day. I'm getting hungry. It was five dollars for five chili cheese dogs. What? <laughs> I can't even eat that many, but they're 100 percent Angus beef, so I like to treat myself. Dude, that is the dope sponsor, dude. You're, yeah. You're also, Toyota. Well. Let's not trip. Your boy over here, he gets a fucking truck. Yeah, you get a truck. I got a Tundra and a Prius. Imagine, you got it you, out. You got I just sp- totaled my car. I'm in the market. If you know anybody, dude, tell yeah. them, tell them what's up. If you know anybody over at Chevrolet, send them my way. I'd love I'd love a truck. Personally. I totaled my Subi last week, Subaru, unfortunately. You know? You're a Subaru guy. I had an Outback. Very safe. This guy would have been fucked Dude, up. Dude, the airbag saved my life. I probably said this last show, but every airbag went off. And those things are soft now, dude. It was like pillows all around me. <laughs> I heard they're really good. I just thought you always had a truck. Nah. How do you get your snowmobile around? Uh, that's a good question. Whose snowmobile did you use this I year? I used this one when he was out of town. <laughs> he borrowed and, my sled. And I used Mark Franks for a couple of years. He left it at my house. He probably still, he probably still has no, it. No, he there. just showed up one day out of the blue without a phone call <laughs> like two summers ago. It was like, you got my sled, dog? <laughs> just like Marco's big yeah. surfer these days. He is. I mean, he lives big out in Cali. Huh? Do you see him out there? <laughs> no, I, never, I mean, I haven't been to Cali that much, but no, like did, Stevie and I will FaceTime him. I said, Marco, how come I always see photos of you on the beach with the surfboard and but the wetsuit, never but the never water. in the water? Like, oh, so epic. I'm like, but did you actually go out into the water? <laughs> yeah, dude, if he was killing it, you'd see the photo proof knowing Marco. <laughs> oh, we were, Stevie and I were just talking about it the other day. Stevie was like, I saw a photo of him, but he was in the whitewash. I was like, bro, the lineup's fucking 30 feet yeah, back there. Dude. That's not catching any waves. That fool can't surf. I guarantee it, dude. I don't know, though, but he's so good at everything. <laughs> he is good at I everything. I remember like, when I first went, like one of the, not even the first time, but I remember going snowboarding with him at Park City, and I like couldn't ride because I was just following him like, Oh my god! Everything he does, and is he's just sick. cracking six foot ollies. And I or will say, dollies. What was it? Was it burning bridges? Was it? Yep. But the cab seven that he does at yep. Alpine Open Meadows, jacket, sound outerwear. And he, does cab, he does cab ten as well on yep. that one. The best cab seven ever done. Yeah. yeah. To maybe this no, day, maybe no grab. No grab on the cab seven. Yeah, yeah. Cab ten he grabs late, but cab seven no grab is the best cab seven that I've ever seen. He is hands the down. King this guy, of he knows style. his. He knows yeah, his you stuff. know your shit. He gets in there. He gets in there with Thugs the pipe for life. guys. Ain't no change in me. I know. Come on. <laughs> that was such, I, I watch hey, that part all the time, though. Yeah. Hey, so um, I got a celebrity snowboard celebrity guest question from um, oh, wow. uh, an old team manager, company owner of yours from Omatic. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Todd Richards. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, kind of like, oh, nice. We're going to make this whole thing. He doesn't know that I'm doing this. I'm going to dodge <laughs> every kind of shade he's going to throw at me. Chris sold you out. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was pretty Here easy. We, we got a pre recorded question from Todd. Here we go. Oh. Hey, Bomb Hole Podcast. Todd Richards, Encinitas, California. Longtime listener, first time caller. Hey, I heard you got Louis Vito in the studio today, and I've always wanted to ask Mr. Vito this question. At one point in time, It was my understanding that you were putting magical stickers on your body to give you powers. If you could elaborate a little bit on the powers that maybe you got from these stickers and where I can get into some of this Hogwarts shit. I really want to crack the nut on this. Yeah, what's up with these stickers, man? Wow, dude. He's a fast talker. Great question. He's a professional. Oh, yeah. He's like, should do that for a living. Yeah, he should, huh? Uh, (laughs) There was these, these, like, uh, holographic little stickers. This is so this is a true thing. Yeah, and he he's called them that since he's ever seen them. But um so if you like the body it's just like kind of weird sciencey stuff that I'm not even probably going to say, right? But so it's like your it like increases vibrations and it like open and closes meridians and helps blood flow. So like if you have like an ache or a pain, like I had plantar fasciitis in a sense on my foot and I like put these on my foot and the arch of my foot. And I kid you not, I was like, no pain. My foot, I'd be like laying in bed, like chilling, 
and my foot would be throbbing, and I'd look, and, like, one of the stickers had fallen off, put one back on, the throbbing would go away. True story. But it's, like, it's kind of like what people would say, like, when you're, you know, if you do, like, the finger test, and you have, like, an apple in your hand, like, you have more strength than if you had, like, a candy bar in your hand, and you'd be able to rip it open because you have more positive nutrients and vibrations of living things more than, like, a crappy candy bar. Really? I see that more as, like, a... Is it like a is placebo? It, is this a, well, yeah, it's a placebo, but potentially maybe it works. Is this some like Mona V shit though, or is it? Well, it's more. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a good, that's a blast from the past. <laughs> Calling it like you, you see know what it. I'm saying? No, like, that's is, fine. I mean, is there a, is there a, is there a multi layer in a pyramid? Scheme? Well, a there, lot of it a lot of it is where you would do acupressure. So if you believe in acupressure, it's almost like the same thing, increasing the vibration you, there. You, Dodge the original question though. Is there the multi level? <laughs> not, sales I don't even system? know if they sell it. Oh, okay. They just okay. they sponsored you. Or? I, my trainer made some, and he was oh, like, "Oh, they a big, make them." Yeah, he like. Well, I'll tell weird, you this: so. there's so many, there's so many like instances where I, I just think if you believe something oh, works, yeah. it works. It it's works. like what there's this, there's these studies where they basically like give people green smoothies. They tell them that they're these super smoothies are going to boost boost their whole immune system. They do a study, test them, all of their immunity levels goes up. It's just water with green dye, you know, stuff like that. There's all kinds of things for like sure. That. And, and the it, mind's a powerful. The, thing. If you believe anything works, if you put that thing on, you believe it works. I bet it works, and maybe it, it probably maybe it does. I'm not trying to be skeptical, but oh, I no, believe no, no, the power I, of the but mind. But that's the thing is, like, I think that that's a problem these days. It's like I could be wrong. You could be skeptical, but that's how the conversation happens, right? Like, it might not work for you, but it works yep. for me, or vice versa, or it might, you know, let's have a conversation about it. I feel like that's what's gone these days. There's no conversation. No, it's, anyways. no, no. People can't have a balanced conversation about anything. It's so polarized. Yeah, so, like, I don't, like, like, why would I be offended that you don't believe it? Like, okay. If it works yeah. for you, Yeah, it but I mean, that's the thing. I don't, if it doesn't yeah. change the steak I eat, it's yeah. all good either way. You know what's funny? I was watching this crazy YouTube that magic is real now, and all it is is your positive. It's the same thing as manifestation. Yeah. And so these like they call themselves witches, but all they do is manifest, and it's like that same whole thing. And they're claiming that's what magic is, and they're selling all these books about it and Dang. all that. Did you get one? I didn't get one, but <laughs> okay. I believe in manifestation. I mean, I didn't know if they maybe got you to buy a book. Chris and I manifested this podcast freaking two months Dude, I, later. I, I, Here I, we are, man. I always, <laughs> I like visualization and you ask for all that the, stuff. out to the universe, and I swear it. I mean, it's probably a lot when you're competing, you know. Yeah, you yeah mentally you, do you're like, do I'm all that doing visualization this. or yeah, I mean, and like really just for me, it's focusing on the positives and you know, not trying to think of too many things because they say your mind can only hold so much, anyways, but. Also, if you think about falling, kind of rewind it in your head and do it perfect. But my thing is, is just like talk. Like I, a lot of times I would talk to myself as I'm dropping in, like whether it's just like, let's get it or let's do yeah, this positivity. or have fun. Or I'd say like F the judges, let's go. Like, you know, <laughs> whatever it was, um, that would help. But like that's what music always did for me was too, is I kind of put you in the zone where you're just focusing and like you can kind of block everything out. And the weird thing is, is for me in contests, I'll be listening to a music full blast. You yell to me from there. I want to hear you. Noise canceling on. I'm good. But as soon as I'm pretty much to the first hit, like, I don't hear anything. No you music. You just black out. There's kinda. nothing. Yeah, yeah. I Until I normal. land, and then it's like. Music back. Back on, yeah. What kind like, of music you bumping usually? Yeah, what do you slap it? Yeah, what, I've always listened what to. What is like, a champion slap? That's what I'm Meek was always Meek was always like <laughs> oh, my. bopping a little ooh, Meek. Yeah, Meek, Meek was always my go-to. And then, uh, but like in Vancouver, I was listening to the clips a lot. Okay. Um, Are you one of those dudes that plays the same song every yep. run? Yep. Just, don't you do that sometimes? Just put shit on repeat at the rail garden? Didn't I hear you say that? Man? Uh, I've I've had if if a song's working, I'll keep yeah, it going. But like, then uh, then I going. get I've slammed to a song and it ruins it. Do you ever have that happen? And then to you? You're off yeah, that but song. like I I'll do like I have like a strapping song where I'm like get because you know you got to get ready to go. I'll listen to that one and that one's like that might be like waiting because there's like a couple people would go while I'm strapping in. It's what like, are we talking? Um, that hey, one. What's a strap in? What's a strap in um, for the layman's? Well, it's like when I'm strapping in my bindings because it's like. No, oh, I mean a song. Oh, strapping song. song. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Blocko was one of them for a while, um, which is a Pusha T song. Oh, um, dude, Pusha T is dope. Yeah, I love Pusha T. He's one of the few people that I haven't yeah. seen that I really wanted to see. Um. I seen him, Salt Lake. I wish oh, you did? Yeah, he came list. through here like two years ago. Pretty much everybody else 
that I've really listened to, I've what seen. A, what about there's a Pusher T uh, Drake beef going on right now? Which oh, side yeah. are you yeah, taking? I mean, that was what like side way t- back. But yeah, that was, I mean, didn't they squash it or no? No, it's kind of coming back again. Yeah, oh, it's it kind of back. And I mean, who are you taking? I think, think that, it's real. I think, or do you oh, think it's, no, it's it's real, one hundred percent. Yeah, because uh, I heard I heard Drake's got a track loaded up. Yeah, oh, but, you're like, listening to ready, but he's not. He hasn't. No, fired it that up. I don't believe it because he put out a. They were saying he had a hundred thousand for anybody to give him dirt on Pusha T, and Ooh. nobody hit. Because Pusha T okay, would so probably come out and squash anyone. What about the Meek Mill uh, Drake beef? Were you you on Team Meek on that? I love. Boy? I mean, Meek's my guy, so I love Meek. I love his. Are you music. on Pusha T or Drake? Obviously, Drake. Um, I, I'm a Drake guy, dude. I hate I to say. Pusha I like T. them both. I like them both. I think Pusha T would crush him on any sort the, of mic battle, but, dude. Without a doubt. Did you do you remember though, like back to back and um. Those two beef tracks he had with, yeah, but I'm not talking a track. I'm talking if you put these two just in a, it's a, it in com- a they, that's not how they do it anymore. It's, see, a, the it's thing a beef is, yeah, track. That's see, how they do it. It's also a beat squash. track as well. Like that's the thing too. That like <laughs> when MGK and Eminem were going out, right? Um, like MGK I was, I was song all hits Eminem. though. Like people, I was all Eminem on yeah, that. that I mean, that's but I'm saying is like people would say like that. You got to think about like what song are you bumping in the car and yeah. like rap devil. Like people bump that. You know what I'm saying? And same with like back to back. That's a good song. Like people bump that and but charged up and anyone charged who, up. Anyone who steps but, to Eminem is a champion, though, because that fool is crazy on the uh, mic. What, well, see, but see, like Meek's diss song like had a lot of truth that just went over people's heads that people don't know about. Yeah, but he didn't have the. He didn't the have the. It was too much of a battle rap. Whereas Drake that's what shit, I'm, but that's Drake what I'm shit saying. just like cut deep, but and that's, that's what you want in a beef song. Yeah. Charged up and back to back, fucking bodied Meek Mill. Fucking, I, I just I, they, they put him in a great. I, in my opinion, Meek Mill basically got a participation award in that one. But see, if you're going by the song, or you're going by like the actual facts that were said, was I think Meek might have had. I'm, I'm with him on that. I've, I've read There's up things on that people. Thoughts. I like Meek. I still like Meek. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. There's just stuff there though that. People don't know like what he's what Meek was talking yeah, about. Yeah, but like Drake getting that, peed on. Is that stuff. a girls' yeah. tour? Is that a world tour or your girls' tour? And he's like, I've, you know, Dude, basically Meek Meek got picked up in a helicopter from prison. That's that's some okay, hardcore he's got shit. His boy, he's got his boys back. Robert Kraft loves Meek Mill. Dude, the dude's <laughs> getting paper. That's I think he's point. doing pretty well. That's a good point. Him I'm and, sure. Him and I mean, Drake's doing pretty damn well, too. Exactly, <laughs> but Drake also wasn't doing well in the beginning because he was signed to, to cash money. Mm. And that was the oh, whole yeah, thing where Pusha comes his, from. and Pusha says, all his money, right? Yeah, so the, the contracts those guys signed, they're not making much money. Oh, they're making, I mean, I, it's all relative, right? Yeah. But they're making more money on touring because it's cut so many different ways. Yeah, that's where all their money comes yeah, from. Yeah, so that's days. where Pusha T comes in. But uh, story of Adonant, Ad, Add it on. I can't remember how they even say it. Yeah, that song. That, that one. That one was. You want to talk about cutting deep? That one was deep. That that was a sick one. I like the battle talk. It's a <laughs> it's a heavy debate in the comments. I feel like people are going to chime in. Yeah, let us know what you guys. Let think, us man. know on the YouTube Who on the won comments. The but um, let's talk about the body issue, man. ESPN body issue. This guy's in the mag, <laughs> looking good. You Naked. get how did this come about? Um, oh, you're naked. You, you're a dong. Yeah. You're going you're fully. I'm all looking. Yeah, I, I thought it was a swimsuit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm confident in goes, my manhood. You're I looking know. good. Dog. He goes. He goes dong out. He just goes dong well, out. It's you funny. can't see anything, right? Well, no. <laughs> you were looking good. Wait, what I, was the photo again? Dude, <laughs> how long? See. How long ago is this? I, be, you I know, know I can't remember I, a video part from last uh, year. I just, just remember you were in it. Um, now you looked good. I I wanted to do it actually because. I think Kelly Slater was in one of them, but I just thought it was cool because, I mean, this is where, like, I was getting in shape. You know, I had, like, I work with this guy, John Schaefer, who's, like, one of the gnarliest trainers that I met through Apollo Ono, who's the most decorated U.S. winter Olympian. And so I was, like, kind of into it. Like, yeah, man, I'm feeling good. I'm strong. And this is, like, top-tier athletes. And you kind of see how each athlete's built for their sport. So they were down. But I got stuck in New Zealand, so I was like, oh, my gosh. I had, like, when I got back, I had, like, a week to kind of get in shape because I was snowboarding for a month in New Zealand. And then, uh, but I didn't know that I was naked. Like, I thought, like, I had, like, a oh, little. Oh, you didn't know you were going to be naked? A little thing on. Okay. And then <clears throat> I was YouTubing, the vi- like, a video about it with my friend Mitch Brown, who is, uh, used to be a pro snowboarder in New Zealand. And they were talking about being naked, and I was like, 
he was like looks at me and I look at him and I'm like, what? And granted, like I went to Stratton Mountain School. Like I didn't play team sports. We didn't do team showers. Like you weren't used to the locker room. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Like it's not really my thing. You're and, not European. <laughs> yeah, so, like, you know, I was used to, when you go to Europe, you know, you're, like, those Americans that, like, have the towels on and the bathhouse and yeah, yep. all that. So, I get there, and I was I had a publicist um, through Joe Simpson, Jessica Simpson's dad, that Jessica uses, but I was using the one in L.A. a lot. So, it was the first time I got to meet the boss lady in New York, and we're in, it's, like, a photographer, his assistant, like, two people from ESPN Mag. Um, her, and then, like, like a makeup person that's pretty much just dabbing your face. So, like, like five people? Yeah, not a lot. And, you're and so, naked. they're, like, stand there. I'm in, like, my boxers in a towel, in a robe, and they're, like, you know, okay, we're ready. And I'm, like, a robe off, boxer. I literally met this publicist, like, five minutes before this yeah. happened, and I just pull my pants off in front of her. You try to chub it up a little bit, or you try no? To because it? everyone's looking at you. Or so do you go shrinkage because you're so nervous? I, pro- I mean, I don't. I don't Sometimes even you know. try to get a little more blood flow to it, so it kind of didn't pop- really want to look. Yeah, you I were just was like, because like, they're like, okay, we're ready, and so everyone's waiting for you. So you're like, okay, and then it's like, okay, like what? What are like some things that you would do for your sport? I'm like, I don't know. Like they're asking you questions. You have your board. You have your board. Well, I didn't use that one though. So here's the so. I do this jumping thing, right? Like I'm jumping. I'm doing like 50 jumps each way and then 50 jumps the other way. But then you kind of Fuck naked. Yeah, but then you're kind of comfortable and you're like looking at the photos because you got the monitor and you're like leaning on the dude looking at the photos and then you realize that you're that naked. You're the only one naked and everyone else is closed. You're like, oh, okay, that's kind of weird. You go rock, you're you go all rock hard at any point? I would have tried to go full rock hard and just power move. Well, dude, I'm jumping, so I'm like doing, I'm like sweating. Okay. But I was thinking I was gonna get like some maybe some good meat, lighting, maybe meat some helicopter, maybe some on. like oil to make me look. No, there was none of that. Like it was just straight up. That was it. So then I had that photo with the board in front of me too. Now the funny thing is, is those photos never got used. But then all of a sudden I saw it on the internet one time, and I'm like, how the hell did that get out? Like that one was kind of weird. Like I'm like smiling, but like whatever. Well, they did like a five-year anniversary issue, and then it was in that issue. Oh. So I had two of them and two different ones. And then, of course, I go to like a signing, and like I think we were in PA somewhere, and Danny Cass made grenade stickers with like the black oh, and white I remember one. That. That's with how the I gr- know this Yeah, <laughs> with the grenade yeah, in the yeah. middle. And he would – and I mean, Danny's like my big brother. Love Danny to death. I was yeah. just with him in Hood. Um, but I'm like sitting next to him at the signing, and he would say to people like, Hey, do you want you want to, you want a sticker of Louis Vito naked? Like here in like the people's look of like, and I'm sitting right there, and I don't think it registers to them. It's just like, Danny, dude, seriously, this is so uncomfortable for me. The way, he just loved it. You were at Hood last week or a couple weeks ago with those guys. Huh? Yeah, yeah, Danny's yeah. back back in back in action, dude. Right? Coaching. I heard he was crushing it, dude, like could be in fun, like awesome he's, mood. And he's yeah, he was he was out great. there board testing, but yeah, he's been crushing. He's coaching out in Vail right now and. Um, just great to have him back because yeah. his energy and personality is like you can't match it. There's nobody out there. Didn't like the Dingo him. show up too? Dingo was there. I, I don't. Even, I think they were there at the same time. I didn't see him together. I see Dingo. Yeah, Bridges like, said he saw him together. Like he came. Yeah. Up I mean, I talked to Dingo like probably a couple times a month. Like oh, I'm, damn. I talk to Dingo quite a bit, and that's like family for me um, as well. That's like a true big brother. Really took care of me. Like I felt like Danny really. He took care of me a lot, but he always kind of had Gooner. Dingo always had me. Ah, uh, gotcha. But, yeah, Danny uh, loved Gooner, huh? Yeah, and I love Gooner. I mean, that was funny when you're talking about when Gooner we were on. Gooner gets the air yeah, yeah. When we were on Forum together, we were on Volcom together, too. Oh, damn. And he would only get girl jeans. Yeah, from I remember Volcom. these days. I remember no, these days. It was like, don't send me snow pants, send me girl jeans. Yep. And then he spent like a, a spring out in Mammoth and hanging out this with is Lane. Gooner? Yeah. Gooner used to be skin tight pants. I remember the, seeing some of those I images. Mean, he was just like he was he was true punk rock like yeah jean Rutland. jackets everything and damn just um, a dude throwing snowballs at everybody being such a f- oh he punk was such kid. a little shit when yeah. he was a kid but like, I I mean cause I used to hang out with him when I was going to Stratton all the time like I've known him forever also fun fact who I got me on Volcom was Billy Anderson was a team manager but I stayed because Luke Matrani when you know he was protege he was shooting a, a video with Keir, uh, Trizza, Trevor and um, Ross. And Luke's like, I don't want to stay. Will you just stay up here for this night shoot? I'm like, if I'm allowed to, like, I'm like, whatever. I'm, like, shooting stuff. And 
I get down one day, and Jeffy was shooting a bunch of videos for me. He's like, I got some shots and da-da-da-da. I'm like, can you please give them to your brother? Because I need to give your brother, like, some some stuff. He's like, yeah, I got you. And it was a clip they used in one of their Volcom promo videos, but I always give credit to Jeffy filming the footage to give to his brother to get me on Volcom. That's so sick. Another sick. fun one. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. I remember you were, you were Volcom for him, Youngblood. Right? Yeah. That was the two. I remember yeah. those days. Yeah. And that's I was on insane. Smith forever. And, and you could jump like a motherfucker back. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm still sure you can still jump, but I remember you yeah. were, like, hitting jumps a I lot. Used to, yeah, I used to, I mean, we used to ride everything you know, growing up at Stratton, and then it was just kind of like, there was more pipe contests, and I kind of just, like, started doing that more and more and more. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, just, I like the jump. Now it's just, like, your speed gauge is so off that I haven't hit, like, a big jump in a minute. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, change, like, just, I'm good. I, 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 trick, I, pick, I pick and choose my crashes now. Yeah, you got to. And my impacts. Well, now you're kind of, you, you've been doing some announcing, too. Wasn't there the first? Yeah, the I read you were the first person to actually be in. And I think uh, it was X Games, X Games yeah. and announce it. Yeah, that was that was long days, man. I was getting up. Yeah, I was at the crazy. mound at like 8, 8 a.m. We'd have practice maybe at night, and then, you know, I'd go back and finish. So, like, I did all the announcing all day, did practice, did a hit at the top of the pipe. Hey, we're getting ready for finals. Gave him the mic, put on all my Red Bull back stuff because, you know, it was no branding, and then competed, got second. Damn. Did the awards, went back up to the booth, wrapped the show up, and that was it. Dude, that work ethic, it's man. Insane. That's insane. That must you, have been crazy. You know what I, I kind of want to talk about with the announcing that's cool is uh, do tour. I've done some announcing. Yeah. And people don't realize that you have a headset on with a producer that's telling you, okay, we're cutting commercial in five seconds, uh, mention this branding. And so as you're talking, there's somebody talking oh in your my ear. Gosh, it's so trippy. It's fucking hard. That's so you see somebody like gnarly. Richards or yourself, you guys are pros, man. It's well, awesome. It was hard. Like, X Games was really hard because that was, like, the first, like, real live, live one that I've done. Straight up live on TV. They, and we were, like, at Summer X Games, and there's weather, wind, and it's, like, you're talking, and you, like, you normally have, like, let's say you're doing a 10-second hit. And all of a sudden, you're not thrown into the event because there's a delay. So you're like, already said your 10 seconds. You're like, keep going, keep going. You're like, uh, like I was doing what one walking through the walking through the athlete lounge, right? Point out all oh, the stuff at the athlete lounge, and they're like telling me in my head, keep going. And I'm like, bro, I've already walked from one point to the other point. I have nothing else to say. And you're like, trying to BS, but you really learn. And it's like hard. The hard thing is, is not going to like your go-to lines, like. You can't say sick for every single thing, or you can't say like whatever your word is. You got to work on like, your adjectives. Yeah, yeah. In your I need to do vocabulary. That. Yeah. It's hard. Like the uh, Doc Emmerich that calls hockey. I think he has like, the, like uh, fifty-two average. Like I'm just making that number up, but it's something like that for passing the puck. He's we like, you work carry on our it, hype you words. pass it. Yeah. So they've got a whole list that, like those pro guys. <laughs> yeah, fifty-two words for passing the puck. Yeah, Jeez, but that's what shovel. you have to do because it's like because also when you get nervous you just go back to what you're comfortable doing. Oh, we get yeah. comments. But they, yeah, we yeah. get comments. Always on, saying insane, insane, or sick. love this podcast, but they sure and say insane a lot. Yeah, it's great <laughs> feedback though. I mean, yeah, but it's like uh, it's just kind of funny because you start paying attention to like, yeah. what you actually say. Dude, these but guys I always find teach that, us. Yeah, you're trying to comments. finish a thought and they're talking to you. Yeah, and you're like, and then if they're saying like wrap it up, you don't want to be like. Okay, and that's it. All that's all we gotta go about. You know, like yeah, you gotta, that like, would confuse the hell out of me. Really, say what you want to say, but don't rush what you're saying. Just know how to cut it quicker. Yeah. Do but they do that on the on the U.S. Open too? I saw you sitting there announcing that. I watched that. This yeah, year. I mean, like, there's still a lot of things that I've got. Like I did a lot of NBC stuff, and NBC, you know, really working on like you don't say girls. Like the girls are killing it today. Like you say, women. Women, yeah. And that was hard because what if oh, it's I never a younger, thought I never thought younger about younger that. One? You still say women, women yeah. I didn't like, know that. Like, that was always the hard one. And I say words really weird. I don't know if it's from an Ohio thing. But, like, I you say, talk weird, I say right? especially instead of especially, especially. And they've corrected me on that. Like, especially. It's not X. They'll, like, say it in the headphones. Yeah, or, like, when we go to a break, they'll say something to me. Louie, you got to say it have like Have you ever this. been into the producer's uh, oh, truck? Oh, yeah. We, well, we have to – well, for the it's, NBC one, we walk through that room, and ours is right off the side. But the producer trucks are crazy. It's, Dude, it's the sickest thing. There's like, I don't know, what, 10 people in there, 20, 15 people. Yeah, it's like and there's, there's crazy lights and TVs everywhere. 
there's yeah. all the angles, all the angles of every. So during a snowboard event, there's probably like 15, 20 angles of all the jumps, right? And there's one guy going camera one, and they they have all these names like Bogey and Mo, and they're swearing, and it's this kind of like crazy. They're swearing. There should be a reality <laughs> TV show on producers of these things. That it's insane. sounds insane. Yeah. And it's like then you see like when they like. Mess up one shot. You're watching it like a football game or something. You're like, "What? That was a horrible angle." You're like, "Dude, do you know how many angles they're like? Obviously, sometimes a button might have gotten pushed wrong, or yeah. they, just, they fake out a camera. Like, dude, they're probably getting screamed at in that room. Is it? Like, yeah, someone's getting yelled at. It's like and a tr- when they say it's a true production. Like, it's insane. Mm-hmm. What, especially with like Red Bull, how fast they turn around edits. So like, we'll finish the event and then they'll show highlights, and it's like Instant. instantaneously. You're like, "Wow, that was chopped together really quick." But what I liked about the U.S. Open is I. You know, I get to work with, like, T-Bird and Tina. Yeah, that's really cool. But, like, cool. work with Sal is, like, I mean, Sal's yeah, a dog. You, OG. you, Sal, and T-Bird is what I saw. Yeah. And I was just like, dude, Well, I mean, talk about Sal, that. though, like, to get a compliment, like, I got a couple compliments from Sal, and that's, like. Salama. I mean, oh, yes. Sorry. That's right. Because, <laughs> see, I, and I know that he said he won't answer to that, and that's what I really got to work because, obviously, growing up watching him, knowing Yeah, you've known him so long Salema. time, so right. it's so hard Right, thank to you for correcting switch. me on that, Salama. But he's, like literally a god so getting a compliment from him like i don't think like that's probably like equivalent to me landing a run at a contest so he said you did really well today louis because he'll tell me he doesn't throw compliments out so he'll tell me so when he says that it's like i don't mean i'm i don't honestly i've been speechless sometimes when he gives me a compliment because i'm so excited because i said the same thing it's like working with a true pro right well you like i i literally i watch him a lot of times if he has to do an open where, you know, he's, like, practicing. And I, and I literally just try to study him because he's so successful, not just in action sports. I mean, he's done stuff for Everything Vice. He he's does. done his own, you know, own production company. He's done stuff for E. He's done such a, a wide variety, but he excels. It's not like, well, we're snowboarders and our bar's really low. Like, he is the bar, and he sets the bar very high. So if I can get close to his level – to one day maybe surpass it, to learn from him is always my goal. But, I mean, he he is the voice of action sports. And he just keeps eyes. evolving, too. Now he's got a podcast. Also, that's what I was going to say. We should, we should uh, give him a shout-out for his podcast. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I've been listening to it. It's really cool. It's really informative. Uh, shouts to Salema. He gets a air horn. A little air horn there. Thank you for cra- – got to remember that, though. That's going to be – I changed his that's name in my tough phone. tough when you like, known him for well, so Again, long. it comes back to like yeah. you just instantly think of a story or you go back to what you're comfortable with because yeah. I'm not used to calling him Salema. When I see him, and I think when you get that face-to-face interaction, it starts to ingrain. Especially right when now, you're in the air. Like, you'll yeah, be like, oh, shit. <laughs> all, all I know right now is like in my phone, as soon as I saw that post, change it in my phone because that will help me. Yeah, then but when I it comes up, you'll see When it. I talk to him, it's not – I don't really say, like, hey, Salema, what's going – it's like, yo, man, what's up? I got yeah. a question for you or something. And that's the other thing. He's always been very helpful in – and like I said, he doesn't sugarcoat it. He tells you. Like, that's he's so told cool. – like, we've talked – he's like, we had a really good talk, and we were kind of talking about, like, what I wanted to do. And he'd just be like, so why haven't you done it? You're just coming up with an excuse. Really? Just, like, stop dragging your feet. And you just got to do it. And that's – but, see, that's what I react well to. That's how my dad is. That's how yeah. I was raised. But that's how he is, and when he speaks, it's like, you listen. You want to do something? Go do it. And that's Yeah, I mean, that's what he's told advice. me on a lot of stuff. So. Yeah. And then what your role uh, during these contests, you – Is trick trick gamer, calling, right? right? Is that what it is? A lot of times, yeah. yeah. Or what their – What does that entail, really? Uh, paying pay your, attention. Know their shit, right? Hoping that the angle's good because sometimes they'll, like, cut, it, cut away real quick or cut to a different angle, like mid-trick. Uh, I struggle more with slope style. Just because there's like so much going New on. New stuff. Coming so I have to pay too. attention. Like pipe, I can call a trick pretty. I mean, I called one Scotty James's trick wrong because he does a switchback twelve and switchback nine. They look the same to yeah, me. Yeah, it's t- so hard to keep up. But for the most part, that I'm big, good. it looks like a nine. But like on slope style, it's just like some of the ticky tack stuff on rails are kind of hard on the getting the name. And like I think I got crap. Um, Who gives you crap? Uh, whether it's yeah, a you can Bur- on the show. Burton or uh, Media House, Red yeah. Media House, but it depends on. But like, I was calling it a hubba. I don't know. I always thought it like is a hubba. hubba. Uh, the bump into the pipe. I'm saying. Oh, I called. I, that I thought you about a concrete ledge. We call concrete ledges hubba. No, so it was like a it was like a roller that people were airing up, like uh. step up into the, like a euro gap. But I called it a hubba. I don't know why. And you're supposed to call it a euro gap. 
Yeah, but I did. I don't know. Yeah. I just called it wrong. I don't. I call it a hub. It looked sounded good to me. Sounds good I to see, me, dude. I seen you hanging out with Sean White. Yeah, I've known Sean. Is that your dog? We're cool. We're good. Did you guys compete against each other a lot? Yeah, I mean, we went to the he's, Olympics he's together. He's pretty competitive, huh? Oh yeah, he's back. He was in Hood too, riding. Oh really? Yeah. Nice. I mean, I've known him since USASA days as well. Um, but yeah, like we get along. We're fine. Um, I would, he probably is not like my closest friend in snowboarding, but like I'll kick it with him when, when he's around. Yeah. Question: People at the top of the pipe, they're all. It's everybody's competing. It's serious. There's big money on the line. It's on TV. Are most of the people boys, or they have each other's back, or do you feel like it's kind of feast or famine, everybody out for themselves? No, nah, everyone's pretty much chilling because you're just hanging out. It's pretty boring up there sometimes. Any beef, though? Um, I want to know the beef. I've heard a story. I don't know. Okay, let's hear your story. Wasn't there some drama with Sean once he finally got beat by his... By his uh, Kevin? Yes. You're talking I've about, heard, I've I mean, heard they that kind story. of talk about it in the crash the show, but So was that real? Yeah. I didn't. Yeah, I mean, that was... They, they, they were, like, their, best friends until he got beat, and then... Yeah, they had, like, a weird thing. Yeah. But, like, I don't know, like, there's a lot of those guys in that crew have had their... Ups and downs. They've been vocal about how they feel about Sean I mean, I guess when you, when you know each other from such a young age, it's probably dude, easy to get weird beef. Sean goes fucking huge, Yeah. Dude. And guy, he rides, like, a 25-plus-inch stance. Can we talk about that stance Yeah, a that's bit? insane. I can't... No, he only has those holes in the on the board, so, like, you can't change the stance. Well, they make a, him a special board with yeah. that stance. Um, 25 inches. It, does, yeah. it seems like a performance inhibitor, if you were to ask me. Like, I, I do, feel too, like, but I feel like he then would, you watch him ride, and you're like... Yeah, it must just be something about his body. You would think that he would like a narrower stance because of how good of a skateboarder he is. That's yeah. so crazy. There's a lot of... A... It looks horrendous, in my opinion. B, like, you can't spin. Have you ever, like, strapped in a snowboard with that big of a stance? You yeah, can't that could spin be, though, fast. tighter pants with a bigger stance. Yeah, that combination is not, a, it's a yeah. very, because, you know, Tech 9, baggy pants, wide Yeah, stance. you can go, like, 26-inch <laughs> stance. It's, it works when <laughs> you got a fat pants. pants and then it kind of works. <laughs> he's got that bow-legged Yo, cowboy. I like, gotta he's about say, to hop I, on a bow. I will never forget I love Colt. The Cole Taylor to draft. I remember when we were shooting the gap over the dumpster, and I'm walking, and he asked me to have a little more bounce in my step. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, 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 am I walking like an idiot or something? I didn't even, again, I didn't know. A little bounce in your yeah, step. Like I needed to have like, like a little. Give him an air horn. Give Cole Taylor an air horn. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, it, yeah. Dude, Cole, he gets two air horns. Two air He's horns. He's an OG. Dude, I haven't seen him forever. Yeah, we need to get him in that seat one of these I days, know. right? <laughs> Bro, I, I he was a hustler though, man. Yeah, he was. He would always, always be working down to hard film. On those always movies. be down. Yeah, any hour, any time. And he got you out jibbing, which was pretty sick. Yeah, but I remember. You know what? Actually, I got one thing I will say. And Cole, when he comes on here, because he'll probably be on here, you can ask him. I'll see if he says it. So I go on this Red Bull rail trip, right? And we go through like all of Eastern Europe. Don't I, don't I don't even know how I ended up on this trip. I was young. I was doing first, like, anything. I've never hit a rail switch before. First time on a handrail. Like, Daryl Mathis was on the trip. I think he hit two rails the whole trip. But he Damn. was, like, he was like coaching me pretty much. Like, he was giving me mad props. A lot of import props. snow, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, like, all imported snow. I remember snow. this shit. We like, would have a book pretty much, like, if, for whatever country we were in. Like, we would go to this spot. We'd show up, and the, the, the snow would be brought. No, we had, we had a trailer. We were driving S-Class Mercedes. We had a trailer that they were bringing that was like a refrigerated trailer with ice rink snow. Oh, I so we'd get this. there and they'd do it. And I remember I gave Cole all this footage because they gave me like boom cam shots, all this stuff. And he was like, I can't use a lot of it because it's, there's not a lot of snow in the shots. I was like, bro, I've literally watched a <laughs> thing on the yeah, trigger that's... movie where Stevie's landing in yeah. grass Bittner's, and riding over. Bittner's yeah. whole first part was grass. And I he think said he that. got a lot of shit for it. They land so on like three stop. ice cubes. Yeah, three crushed ice yeah, cubes. Yeah, Stevie's part, like literally he was landing yeah. like, and it was like when he landed, the snow went away and it was like grass. And he, that's what he told me. I was like, so I think I ended up giving a lot of that footage went to, um, did I give some? I might have, I gave you guys some, but I think, I, I don't know if Clancy took some. Clancy might have taken, yeah, a Clancy fat, took some because. 50 front three on a yeah, down flat down, I remember. Yeah, 5 0 that one. I, I learned like switch 50 50, period. Switch 50 50, cab three. That's switch front was. lip. Switch hard way 180. Front hard way 180. You uh, were just learning as you go. Yeah, on just this never. Trip. Okay, we'll try, I like gap, sw- switch gap to the down. Also cased it. Like my whole intro for Clancy's movie is like me eating crap. Damn. Question. You're a pipe dog. You got razor sharps. You detune oh, yeah. for the rails or you keep them razor sharp? 
No, I get a smaller board for rails and D. And D and too. No, I bevel them now. Oh, you do bevel. Because Flood once, Shane Flood once told me, like, showed me how to bevel them. Because then you can tilt it up and still get an edge on Ooh. snow. But he said, if you catch your edge when it's beveled, then you deserve your catch your edge. Really? There's my Shane Flood. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Shane Flood's I had dope. a lot of people, like, a lot of, like, of the grenade guys that really, like, kind of looked out. Like Actually cared. Kramer was probably the best one. Like, Kramer I remember being dope. in the backcountry. And I'd be like, you know, chucking and whatever. And it'd be like, he's up. He's like, no, Louie, get it again. You got to get this. And he would like tow me up or whatever and like skip his turns on the jump so I would get a shot. Damn, it, he's a and, nice dude. Yeah, like you, the nicest. Dude, just had a throwback memory. Remember the Bone Age uh, up at Mammoth? They had the eyeball jump. Oh, yeah, I love that, that one. Remember that? Sick. I had a dude, Nike ad on it, that one. We, uh-huh. So I hit that with you guys. I was there for that yeah. session. That was the. One of the only big park jump I've ever guineaed in my life, I remember. You were the guinea. I guineaed it. Uh, that was, uh, I wouldn't do that now. I s- oh. always get broke off. I wouldn't do that now. <laughs> I the only the young remember bucks. the cool thing about that jump was if you went to the right or to the left, it was like a round mound, so you yeah. were like still safe. The landing was an eyeball. Yeah, I got a back seven Nike ad on that I remember on that. that. One. That was a fun session. That was cool looking jump. Yeah, that was, I mean, again, those were like the grenade days. They always did cool things yeah. like that, and obviously, uh, you didn't really ever see it jump with an eyeball. No. For the I remember <laughs> Danny Cass hit him with a fat switchback rodeo on that thing. Oh, yeah. He, like a golden god. Like a golden god. Yeah, that that movie, like, I got a sled pretty much and just filmed with that movie. But, like, riding with – I remember being in the backcountry with Chad Ottestrom. And let me tell you, I don't. I bet you, you go out with him today as the same back then. The dude is also one of the best snowboarders ever. Yeah, and he's not yeah, no slowing shit. down, it doesn't seem like. He is <laughs> so good. Like, I bet you could, he could drop into a pipe right now and yeah. do his Mickey, he, like, no problem. He might be the one of the only people in snowboarding to do a switchback 10 in the pipe. Early. Like, he was yeah, the I'm first right. people. I mean, first people. I shouldn't yeah, say yeah, only. Yeah, I should yeah, say yeah, first. I was going to say, by now, they're probably I, doing I, pretty much everything out yeah. there. Back in the academy days, though, I remember him just hauling ass, dropping in switch on the deck and doing, like, switchback, like, 10, I want to say, like, Two feet oh, out. He's so good. Yeah. yeah. He he's, is. But, like, sick. I mean, saying that people don't understand is, like, all around rider is, like, the, 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 the yeah. thing. He'll so get really, out in the backcountry. Yeah. He'll fuck he turns him, and know. he talks shit on turning. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Dude, Hashtag just, nobody cares that you turn. He's so <laughs> sick. He's the best. But that's just cool. Tech seeing him, see, yeah, seeing yeah, him at contests that he's hunt. judging, you know, always trying to get him to ride the pipe. And then you're like, okay, why do I want you to ride the pipe? You're making me feel like crap right now. Watching <laughs> you ride the pipe, I'm struggling and you're he ripping. He still rips the pipe. Are you, yeah. are you outnumbered as a goofy footer out there in the contest? Oh, yeah, always. Because Chopper's a goofy foot. Yeah. There's oh, shit. not enough goofy footers out there. Dude, I didn't know there was a, the ratio was off like that. You know what's a wild one you do is the switch double Michael Chuck. Coming I, uh, up the heel side wall. Or no, no, not switch. Regular. regular. You're goofy. The goofy <clears throat> double Michael Chuck. But I do it all funky, which like, makes it really inconsistent to land. <laughs> <laughs> but when I landed, I love it. Dude, you can get bodied on that one. That's a oh, chuck yeah. roast. Dude. I've been bodied on it a, a lot. Chuck roast. That is a chuck. I've like roast. done my discs and my back on that one, doing Roman chairs, like landing on your butt on the deck, and oh. you just feel everything up the well, spine. I'll I'll tell you what, Louie. You got anybody you want to thank or anything like that? Well, I got oh, one, you got, we got one some more, more stuff. Patreon question oh, yeah, yeah. for you. Um, Alex Alert says, "What's more fun, competition days or free riding now?" Ooh. Well, if the competition's going well and it's like a big <laughs> event, then that's always the best because, like, Euro X Games, for instance, like, they had such a sick crowd. So, like, winning that one was always, like, or win- was winning that or doing well there was fun because you had a huge crowd. The people, that half of them don't even speak English, but they're just screaming. But then the thing is, is, like, you would go where everyone was staying in the hotel. Like, the lobby was, like, the bar and there was, like, tables and they had – a bunch of TVs, and it was, like, full coverage. It wasn't, like, just snippets. It was all day. So people would either come and be, like, hanging out, watching in the mor- like in the mornings, afternoons, evenings, or if then a group would leave and go compete, and then they would come back, and they would watch. So everybody was hanging out, like, every sport, ski, snowboarding, whatever. Keeps you hyped. But it was just, like, you, it was all your boys, so you're just having a great time. It wasn't like you needed to go very far to have anything. So those were always fun. Um but I love good free ride days. Nowadays, though, it's hard to free ride sometimes at the resort because it's so busy. Yeah. But, like, I love going to Snowbird. And I love Snowbird. Dead, Dead on the, always tells on the me he sees you time. up there. Oh, yeah. And I see Doman all the time. And yeah, they both are like, dude, Louie's always see, up at the Seeing bird. Doman is, like, probably 
a highlight in my day. And I say it because he's always smiling and he's always so happy. So, like, when you roll up on Doman on a power day, like, you're having a good time already and you see him just, like, smiling ear to ear and it just your day gets better. And I see, like, uh, Charlebaugh there a lot. Yeah, he's there a lot, And I, I feel more comfortable because I remember when I was younger, like, I was pretty intimidated because, you know, he's absence filmer, like, yeah. big dog. And I was like... <laughs> now you can just make some runs yeah. with him. No, huh? I mean, he's another one I enjoy his Instagram because... It's so positive and just being out. Yeah, he's been killing it on, huh? like picking up trash. And but it's just, just like, but just cool talking messages, about, like, yeah, but being cool like, art, real just subjects. be snowboarding. And that's yeah. what I feel like when I get, when I watch his, his get from his messages, like, like be out, out in the mountains and just enjoy, you know, be respectful and just have fun. Yeah. And that's what I always liked about his Instagram. I've told him that too. It's a good But message. I love, I mean, I just love free riding in general because. But it all depends on weather and who you're with. Yeah. But I go to snowboard by myself a Doesn't lot. Doesn't the bird hook you up with passes? Yeah. Which is a very I've, small list of people. I have a hey, great, bro, <laughs> dancing with the stars, man. You get I, yes, come on. I have a great Olympian. relationship with snowboard, and, you know, I try to do as much as I can It's literally for like three them. snowboarders or something are on that list. I love riding. Brooks is on, on the squad, and Brooks is always really fun to ride with him. I was on that list, and I they track you, and I traveled a lot that year, so I got snipped. Oh, Buds really? got cut. I got clipped. I get worried about that sometimes. So I'm like, what can I do? Dude, you got to make I, sure you're tapping, getting your pass. I go up, up by myself all the time and just like, because I live so close, so I ride like, you know, nine to noon or whatever and just cruise. That's the way to do it. It's fun just to be like, I like I like riding that place even not on a powder day. Yeah. Um, and Dude, so that, it's cool. Two winters ago when we got way more snow than normal, that yeah. gully in the middle, like, yeah. was the sickest it's ever been with all the side hits. I forget what it's called. See, like, I like, I mean, like, I get to ride with, like, Tomich there. Yeah, you see, My Tomich. thing is I'm not good with names. Tomich carrying his kids around. Yeah, so. but see, Bjorn, like, Bjorn, like, I fall, I had some of my best days following Bjorn and Bittner and Tomich, but I'm not good necessarily by myself because I don't really know anything. So, like, you know, I'll go out to Keyhole and I've gotten, like, cliffed out before. I'm like, oh, I guess That's I don't worst. really know where yeah. I'm at. But, I mean, I just have, I just like exploring there and, Sometimes it's just a little crowded. It's a that's pretty much mountain. where I go. I go there, and then I go Woodward Park City now, which is awesome. That's a good mixture right there, I'm too. I'm going to give Woodward Park City a little air horn, too. Dude, that place is um, so sick. Dude, I wanted to bring it back. You were just talking about the contest scene, and I know you do these, like, Louis Vito parties and shit at X Games and uh, whatever, but the thing that trips me out is you're sober. Yeah. First now, of all, man. how long have you been sober and, and why? Nine years? Nine Ooh. years. Nine years, Rops. I think. Yeah, why did you choose to be sober? Um, I went real big in Vegas for Supercross one year, like four days, four nights. I have a lot of friends out in Vegas that um, pretty much run that place, so I had a great time. Went to Mammoth for a week and rode, and it was like hung over the whole week. Then I went to this new trainer, that Apollo's trainer, John, and I was there for five and a half weeks, and I went through freaking hell. It was like his easiest day was harder than anything I've ever done. I've had like big-time trainers. And he's, like, anti-drinking. So, at this point, I'm, like, what, five and a half? I'm, like, six weeks sober. And I come back, and I'm skating at Stevie's house. And we're skating. And I'm, like, yo, I think I'm just going to – I think I'm not going to drink for, like, two months. And he's, like, two months? You're already there. Go for three. And I'm, like, okay, I'll go for three. And I was, like, I'm going to go for four. And then I was kind of, like, looking at things, too. Like, you know, Kevin had his traumatic brain injury. Sarah Burke died. Um, you know, all that kind of gnarly stuff. And you're like, wow, I have like one small window to really be the best I can be. And at the end of the day, no matter what happens, look back and I gave everything that I could. I was as healthy as I could be. I was as focused as I could be. I have nothing I can regret and, or wish I would have done. So that's kind of what I did. And then six months was going to be summer X games. I had to survive summer X games. And I used to go there, have like a suite at the W and just send it and have a great time watching. And I made it through summer X games, not drinking and as soon as I made that and I hit six months, I didn't miss it and I haven't gone back. And it's also kind of part of me is like, when am I ever going to go a year again not drink? When am I ever going to go two years? Now I'm like, okay, when am I ever going to go nine years? I mean, I'll probably have some wine or something when I get older, but I don't miss partying. And I used to be like, I kind of wish wilding out. But then I'm like, well, when I was wilding out, I used to be like doing dumb stuff. Yeah, and the hangovers. Do you think it <laughs> days, geez. attributes yeah. to your success, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I mean there's definitely some injuries that would be worse or I wouldn't have healed as fast. I mean, I rode 2018 with a blown disc, a torn tear in my L4, and I broke my back, and I still was riding. Like, and you were riding, competing, and mm -hmm. damn. And then what's what about your like your diet and workout regimen is psycho, dude? What? Yeah, I've, I've I've loosened up my diet a bit now, yeah. but a lot of fish and chicken and green veggies. I don't really do a lot of milk or soy, 
or bread um, or rice. And you're snacking on eggs on the plane. But, yeah, snacking oh, on yeah, eggs. Oh, yeah, he told us before we started <laughs> rolling. <laughs> This well, guy's a uh, bathroom egg snacker. He's a bathroom yeah. egg eater on the plane. Sneaking him yeah, in. Yeah, I bring a carton sometimes, a hard-boiled egg. It's a perfect, like, oh, 60 calories. you have, like, calorie. a full little carton. No, I'm talking oh, about yeah. the 12 piece. Oh, the 12 piece. Oh, the 12 <laughs> yeah, he's got a 12 rack. Dog. He's got a Four, 12 rack. Dude. Four would be gone by the time I landed. This guy's how, just... How many... Okay, how many cal or how many protein grams in a? Egg? I don't know. I just know they're like sixty calories. Sixty good. cals. Okay, but I don't. I eat, I don't. I go back and forth. Like I go with the between like eating full eggs and eating egg whites and yeah, go back and forth. Yeah, because the yolks aren't quite as good. Uh, for some you. people say that's uh, debatable. Yeah, it's debatable. So, so I, mean, so I want to talk, talk about that. I want to talk about these these yolk. bathroom egg eating debacles. So he, so he, basically, this thing smelled like a fart when you eat hard boiled eggs bum people out. Yeah. Yeah, the I guy would be next bummed out if I got like, this guy's got twelve <laughs> fucking hard boiled so, eggs next so to him. So what would you do? What did you do? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I put I like go in my backpack where it instantly would smell as soon as you open up your backpack. <laughs> I grab like two eggs, because normally that's what I have for a snack, one or two, whatever. Put them in my pocket, close my bag, I go to the bathroom on the plane, sit on the top of the like sit on the seat, like the cover. And then I'd put my feet up against the door and get, like, some napkins, lay them <laughs> on my lap, crack the eggs into my lap so I didn't get the shells everywhere, eat the eggs, like, one bite all the way, you know, no all of them. No salt and pepper? No, 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 straight, no salt and pepper. Straight wow, through. Bold. Boom, boom. If I have hot sauce, I'll do that. But mm. boom, full, like, one, one in bite. each bite. Yeah. No chewing. Throw this. Well, I try to chew just a bit. <laughs> you just deep throw oh, hope, swallow. Hopefully it's, not too dr- hopefully it's not too dry or else you're, like, got, you know, you can't breathe because you don't have yeah. any water. Throw the eggs away, the shells away, walk out, probably still chewing, sit back in your seat, and you're good for another three hours. And then back in the bathroom. If, so <laughs> international flight, man, you could be well, International, 12, depending on where you're going. Pounds. So sometimes I'm, like, eating a lot more because I can't take them through customs. Like, New Zealand, I got to eat them all. Oh, That's you got to eat tip. them before you land. But That's also make sure you put them in the fridge because I've also had them where you crack them and they're, like, slimy, and I've still forced myself to eat them, and they yeah. taste I'm surprised I haven't died yeah, or something like that. Takes, just just takes the forcing flavor it out. down. And then w- your workouts are psycho. I always see you yeah, so going like, crazy. What my, kind of workouts are we My talking? thing with workouts is like I don't do – I call it water cooler talk. Like I don't – like if I take a break, it's either a 10-second break or it's a static hold in a position or I'm running stairs, jumping stairs, doing something in between each workout. So I don't take any breaks of like – Yo, so what's going on? Yeah, you're not bullshit. John, how's your day? What are you doing this week? How many yeah. how many yeah. days a week you work up on a on a good week? Just six. Six. I know okay. I take Sunday off. Okay. But I, I kinda switched. I was doing two a days Monday to Friday, one on Saturday, none on Sunday. But now I've kind of morphed them together a little bit because I'm doing more like static holds and limit strength stuff. Um, do intervals two to three times a week, progressive ones, but I do fifteen percent incline now on those on the treadmill. Um you know what I seen yeah. the video of you pulling the truck? Okay, oh, yeah. I was thinking about this. You know what the bungee is in snowboarding? The banshee bungee. Yeah, ba- so for the for the the layman's listening, basically there's a giant rubber band that if you're in a flat field and there's like a rail, a kink rail or a down rail, there's just a giant rubber band you pull back and it slingshots you into the rail. It's actually pretty embarrassing how kooky it is, but it gets you speed, right? Sometimes you got to You got to do it. But I was kind of thinking after watching you pull that Toyota, you'd kind of be a Beast, bungee Pulling beast. The bungee. You might one, be a bungee maybe a one man bungee. One man bungee. If it pays, I'm there. You, you actually. <laughs> if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense, man. <laughs> you actually pull the truck. I have one. I I pull it they like a back it like a backpack. I have one. I'm pushing it, and I have one where I'm walking backwards, dragging it. Damn. But it's funny. Like, I have people like the truck's moving. I'm like, no, it's not. But if it is, okay. Like it's still a freaking tundra. Yeah. I can do it without it. Like I had one. Where I was doing like box jumps on the tailgate, like whatever, five or ten box jumps, and then pushing it. Oh damn! And then the one like I bought chains to do it, like to pull it. Yeah. And that one I still almost didn't have enough space because, you know, when you want to stop, it's mo- it's gonna still move. Oh, true. But I wanted to try to figure out another way to do a couple more because it's fun and it's like something different. Where, yeah. But like my girlfriend had one where. We set up the phone, and she's, like, laying on top of the roof of my truck through the Sick. sunroof, and then I come into frame pulling it, and she's just, like, chilling, like, watching the truck, you know? That's like, sick. You guys just shoot these and yeah, we put them She's up. a golfer, right? Yeah, she's a pro golfer, so. Like, crazy yeah. viral golf yeah, she, videos. She crushes my social. My gosh. She's, like, she, like, texts me if I post on my story. What is that supposed to be? What does that mean? You don't even say where you are. Da, da, da. I'm, like, I don't know. <laughs> just, just schooling you. Yeah, I'm, like, so bad How's at How's your golf game? It's getting better. I got a, I got a driver for my birthday from her, and then I got some lessons with her coach, who's like one of the best. So 
Hoping it's going to get better. Are we talking violent snap hook directly into the woods off the tee? Or what? <laughs> I that's had, me. That's you know me right now. You know what's funny is I had my best day ever during quarantine in Arizona. We went and played. And I had like a 335 yard drive in the fairway. And I was like, Ooh. and I shot like eight over on nine, which is like really good for me. I haven't done that since, but I can drive the ball. If I, if I've gotten, I had, sometimes I go through peaks and valleys, but like my drives now are, we're doing well in Oregon where they'll go straight. I can probably do like 280, 300 pretty consistently. Woo! Dead lungs telling me that the balls have progressed. How they make them so people can drive farther now than I'll, they used to. They're not to. mine because I just play, like, noodles and whatever balls I've found over the years. But it's all it used to be, like, different. Oh, I'm sure. And now they've uh, mastered them so you can hit them farther, which is cool. I yeah. Know. I cool, mean, that's cool why people like tech. Pro V1, Pro V1Xs, and yeah. those are expensive. Yeah, putting $30 in the woods. It's nice going. Well, golf. it's nice because when I play with Haley, like, we play really nice courses because they let her on for free, so I just get to tag along. I'll lose, like, a crappy ball. And I'll go find like two Pro V ones and, like, <laughs> and be sweet. like, Sick. They "Come up, <laughs> they cost like twenty, thirty bucks." Dude, a saying? box. What is a sleeve of Pro V ones? It's got to be like I don't know. Was it thirty bucks or something? Yeah, they're expensive. Dude, I that's don't know. Crazy. I'm actually not sure. That, don't golfers, fe- don't quote me on that loot. Yeah. Do you, Do you have anything left? Do you want to chat? You got no, anything on the list? That's it. I think that's the list. Stone, well, you know, I'm pretty sure you shot one of my Omatic ads, didn't you? I believe so. A long time ago. At was it at the uh, on the tree? Yes. That's one of my on favorite photos tree. I've ever had. Sick. I got to dig that up. Yeah. Bud's Omatic forgot he even took it. Yeah. I, well, I, I was just making sure that I was right because it's a front invert on a tree. Yeah, it was sick. I think it was like the first year they had like the launch, I want to say. It was. It was, yeah. That, it was the first year at the launch at uh, in at, in California. I can't remember where it was, but I remember that. It's it was the one first of my favorite time I shot ones. like the Midget Mafia too. The, I love those guys. Like uh, Zach Hale. I always Daniel. talk when I, whenever I say uh, Midget Mafia. How big is like Justin Mulford? He's crushing on a dirt bike Dude, now. Dude, crushing it. Doing. And I saw crazy Lenny. Stuff. I saw Lenny in Copper this year. I was like, "Oh, these kids are all huge now." Yeah, they're full grown men now doing their thing. Lenny was out here shredding the bird. Uh, Seth Hewitt had him out with Volcom, which was he's cool. awesome. He's cool been ripping with them. I mean, their yeah. whole that whole crew like they were all such good kids too. Yeah, good kids doing their thing. Hale still, I still have a photo of Hale when he was, like, that size on his caller ID picture. Yeah, right. Dude, he had the yellow Sessions jacket. Oh, my Just, gosh. Yeah. Or the giant Tech 9 jacket. Or is that what it was? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was a Tech Huge 9 jacket. Tech yeah, nine my bad. Yeah, yeah. Jacket. He looked was so big on him. Dude, I remember going to the Tech 9 warehouse when you guys were, like, closing up the Vermont one. And oh, in the Vermont one. Yeah, and I had so much stuff, and it was, like, it was not organized at all. I was pulling out, like, some hidden gems from the years. Just pulling out some oh dope my old gosh. school They're shit. This. You guys had the sickest. That's awesome. Well, you know what, though? I wish that uh, – shout out to the Bush Brothers, but, like, Sound and all their outerwear companies they did were so sick. Yeah, I agree. Twist was insane. Sound – I used to ride for, and for section, Sound, which is dope. Section, too. Yep. Like, they had yeah. Section, right? Yeah, Section was kind of the Marco the would always be rocking it. Yeah, but yeah, like their Marco stuff was Trent. so sick. I'm like, what? what? This is so sick, their yeah, stuff. Yeah, Trent and Troy cr- crushed it, I and mean, they still do. They're still doing big things. What are they doing cool. right now? Do you know? Dude, Troy has, like, uh, he makes denim in the USA, oh, which is sick. pretty sick. He has, like, yeah. a cool thing going where he, like, makes it all himself. And uh, Troy was work or Trent was working at Black Diamond, and oh, designing yeah. like an, he designed their like new snowboarding launch that they're doing yeah, and yeah. and a bunch of their other. Cole's gear. doing that, right? Yeah, Cole was there too. Is John Jay on Black Diamond? I think because John I Jay. saw John Jay at Hood, bro. The Sims team was out there and him hitting rails. Really? I was like on the tow rope. I'm like, where's the powder at? They had like, the whole Sims team out. Yeah, there, but the John team. Jay out there just getting it on the rails. Damn. It was like back in the day when I was riding Mammoth scene. I'm like yeah. just crushing. He did a uh, cab 270 back lip at Rail Garden 16 in one of his video parts. One of the standard videos. He's Damn. got it. He's got oh, it. Oh, for him. sure. But dude, yeah. what do you think the last time he hit a rail was? Yeah, yeah, true, right? I was happy that he even had a board that he could go hit a rail on. It wasn't like some big boat. Yeah, true. <laughs> he probably had to special order a jib board for the trip. I'd imagine. Yeah. That's dude. sick. They have a little he, rebirth going. He's, he's a beast, man. Well, we've been chatting. But I got one more question. What up? When you were doing all, like, the talk shows after the Olympics, did they, like, train you for that shit, or did they just throw you in the shark pit? I mean, I've done some media training, like, through Rebel and stuff, but most of the stuff is, like... They do media training for Well, you. like, U.S. team has done some, and, I mean, you've, mostly it's learning, like, how to, like, pivot if you, like, ask me a question I didn't want to answer. 
Oh, well, you kind of Todd actually, it. Richard said you were gonna you were gonna dodge that one about the. Oh no, nah. <laughs> I'm so used to Todd's stuff, like it's like nothing, you know. So you kind of, if you they ask a question you want to answer, you know how to deflect. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Politicians are good at that. Yeah. Oh yeah. They don't course. even answer the question that was asked. It's yeah, like the, the people, and, they, and you're still like, oh, okay, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I like when you ask a question and they go around in circles so much. And the time they finish, you're like, you're more confused than before you ask the question that you don't want to go through that again. You're like, all right. Yeah, you're like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm moving on. Uh, but my 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 parents and my dad's True, always dad, preached huh? it. Yeah, and the thing is, like, I try to tell people. I remember I had a conversation with um, a snowboarder when he was younger, and it's like so much of it is about being able to talk, and especially in the contest world, right? You can be the best snowboarder in the world, but if you, like, can't put together a sentence or can't carry a conversation, it's not going to work because at the end of the day, you got to sell product, right? Mm -hmm. It was like I had it where even if I didn't do well at a contest, they knew that they could interview me and I'd give them a good interview about the event, about the half pipe, whatever. So, like, I was guaranteed getting TV time for that. But also, like, you can, you know, converse with fans and do stuff for the company, go speak for them. But... It does. It's more than just being a good snowboarder. It's having a whole package, and some people have a hard time grasping that. And I don't want to say like, you know, take away from being a great snowboarder, but to have the whole package, it's huge. Is like where you're gonna make. And that's what more keeps money. you going. I yeah, imagine, I mean, yeah. and that's the thing is like for me, it's I always wanted to be bigger than snowboarding, but bring snowboarding with me. So again, it comes back to like Dance with the Stars, getting more people involved in snowboarding, getting people to try it, to go buy product. I don't care who, what kind of snowboard you buy. I don't care what kind of guy. I don't care about any of that. Just go snowboard. And that's why I love taking people snowboarding and sharing what I love to do and see their face light up and seeing how stoked they are yeah. to go snowboarding. And <clears throat> that's where I, I think that like being able to convey a message and speak and then when – you know, something mainstream like the Olympics comes around, they're not necessarily scared of snowboarding, and you have somebody that can be a good spokesperson for it. And I always say, like, snowboarding is like the trunk of a tree for me, and then everything, all these different opportunities I've had from, like, the challenge on MTV and Dance with the Stars and Body Issue and this and that, it's all the branches. So when I'm done snowboarding, I have this whole tree of things that I've done, but snowboarding has always been my driving force and has always been the main base of it, and I'll always be a snowboarder, but try to branch out, but take snowboarding with me, introduce people to snowboarding because it's like watching rugby, right? You watch rugby by yourself and it's whatever. You watch rugby with a diehard rugby fan and you're so much more in tune. So, you know, one thing with Dance with the Stars, I had some like, you know, older people that started following snowboarding and started following like my friends in snowboarding because they learn, okay, well, I know Louie, so maybe I'll stop on the channel to see Louie and then you learn about somebody else and you get – deeper down and you kind of have that emotional connection with the person again i don't care who you support you don't have to be the biggest fan of mine yeah but if i can bring you to snowboarding and you find somebody that you can relate to or you can look up to then that's the goal because you're trying to build the industry i'm trying to build that to get more people involved because it's so expensive so how can we still keep the influx of money coming in where everybody can enjoy it whether you're a filmer a backcountry a contest a rail whatever you want to do as everybody make money together and do what we love to do. Yeah, I wish everybody had that idea because that's what snowboarding needs, man. That's awesome. You yeah, think I, that mean, I think you're, you're looking, starting to see it. But you're looking at it from 5,000 feet yeah. instead of just, like, horse blinders from ground level. I so mean, there's, like, cool. I mean, it's, it's, like, pretty, I'll be honest. Like, I, I know there's a lot of people that, like, I'm not, I don't fit. Like, when I went to the bone zone, and I always tell them the I story. Gotta, and I say this as a joke, like, off as a joke, but it's pretty serious, like, Yo, uh, are you going to go to the bone zone? I think I'm going to go. And he's like, yeah. I was, and he's like, this was to him? Yeah. I'm like, we can roll together or whatever. Because I'm like, I'm not going to the bone zone. I got to roll in with Grundy's because I'll get kicked out of there. They're like, like, I'm not the bone zone. You really think they'd kick him out? No, but I'm, yeah. like, first off, I'd be like, who are you? Second off, I'm like, I was here back when it was hand built all in the woods, like yeah. before you even snowboarded. But the thing is, is like, I am a contest rider, a pipe rider, did dance with the stars. These are all like core Rail kids, like... The chorus. I'm like, I only ride for this company because they're core and that is whack, you know? There's definitely so, some of that going on. So I got to bring though, in as somebody. As you bring like, a shovel, you'd get respect, right? I didn't bring a shovel, dude. I don't even think Ooh, I own a shovel. I'll tell you a, what he did. He, er, he earned no, the no. respect because he hit him with a front blunt, four-fifths commish. Ooh, is that what he did. No <laughs> we shovel, had a, we had a fatty. We had a fatty session with a flat bar. But it's just fun, like, for me, 
like again, it's like I I, I gotta bring him. He's gonna be like that's my yeah, in, basically dude, because like, I'm cool with him. A cosign, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> cool with him. So you got a problem with me? You can talk to him, right? You, you know, know the same shit. I roll up at the pipe though. Somebody somebody tries to give me shit. I say, hey, I'm. I'm, I'm with him. I'm with Louie. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I've run that half. Goes both right. ways. <laughs> Goes both ways. I was like, I had this kid that, at camp this year, and it's like, if you're timid, you're not. It wasn't too bad, like getting snake, but you're gonna get owned. And I'm like, you're not dropping. He's gonna drop. Then I'm gonna drop, and then you drop. Like, really? Like, I've been doing this for too long, but it's like, again, it's just like, yo, you want to come? I love when these guys come to the pipe because, like, like Mark McMorris was riding through the pipe, and like he's sick at riding pipe in general, but like. It's fun to have other people come in from like other crews that you're friendly with in your in your zone and like yeah let's get it what are you gonna do Crippler whatever yeah. you want to follow me I'll follow you what do you want to do have you want me to film a it. follow cam for you that's easy but uh, I understand that but that with, with like going to the bone zone but it makes me laugh too because it's like why do you care if I'm here Ted he's like OG bone zone right yeah, Grundy's he, he, OG he bone runs zone it now, like Ted. I've known Ted forever like. Mad respect to Ted always anyways, but, like, I've known him forever, so if he if he doesn't want me there, he would tell me. Yeah, he would I'm not going to let some kid that, up. like, just moved to Salt Lake last year and just graduated well, and really, middle school. Well, really, Ted and Holtz, <laughs> Ted, Ted and Holtz are the authority anyways, yeah. right? I but mean, I will no say. No one else has a right to I will say, out. though, there are some insane. I'm like, Grandy's, I'm like, who is that kid? Yeah, oh, this is so-and-so. I'm like. Probably the dust yeah, box. Yeah, some insane kids. Well, was it? Cooper? Oh, Cooper yeah. and Whittier, yeah. Oh, dude, my the, gosh. You want to talk about board control. Bro, this dude would, like, I swear, like, oh, he caught his edge. Nope, he's just doing 450 back onto the rail. No problem. Like, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. matter. A fall is, like, he, he just was, turns it into some cool stuff. He was probably 17 when you saw him, too. Just, I'm just like, anyways. You know what, sick? You were talking about the half pipe and how a lot of the street dudes maybe don't hit the pipe. You know what yeah. the East Coast ones do, though, because I think they're raised with it. Always being around. Yeah, but they're also not afraid. Well, like you took Reed at the Bodie thing. Never seen this guy hit any kind of tranny. All of a sudden, he's doing 20-foot airs. And you're just like, what? And he's like, I grew up in the East. Yeah, and they're like, hey, it's yeah. not blue ice. I'm good. Like, yeah. It doesn't matter yeah, after that. Yeah, he was that. like, it's a slushy day, man. And he was going off. It was nuts. You know what's the funniest, though, is when you see photographers, filmers, or ex-pro snowboarders that weren't contest riders either – shooting contests, filming contests, or team managers now. Like, mm -hmm. I love when like, Gabe LaRue started showing up at contests. I'm like, <laughs> what up, dog? Like, you know, like, I was, you know, like, the people that were shooting when I did that live in Louis Vito for Red Bull, I had, like, Nate Avila and, and all those guys and, like, Sharon and those guys. Well, Sharon does a lot of NBC stuff, but those guys filming contests, and they're so used to, like, backcountry stuff. So they're loving it. It's just so, but it's just such a funny vibe to see, like, Moran's traveling around when he was shooting. It's like... You see these guys, or like Alex Andrews now. I'm like, yep. bro, you're in my world now. What's up? Because <laughs> you like, you like, kind of like, kind of like, dog me a little bit. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> We're at a contest. You're like, I'm the only person you know in this entire <laughs> thing. <laughs> but it's funny because he's like, dude. I swear, he rides so hard at the con, like not even like the contest setup, but he's just like with the boys that he's got like his his team, you know, and he's like ripping hard, just like normal Loving Alex it. Andrews stuff, but yeah. Like, all those you just the going puppy. ham. The puppy. The froth puppy. Well, you know what, Louie? I think we did it. I All think right. we covered a lot. Uh, you got any, anybody else you want to thank or anything like that? Thanks for having me. I mean, that was the thing. Like, Ted was like, you should you should do the bomb hole. I'm like, yeah, he knows that he can just ask when I'm down. And so he's like, I'm telling him right now. Ted like, Borland? Yeah. I was like, You've I, been on our list. Yeah. I, no, 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 but that's what he said. But I was, like, I was like, yeah, dude, of course, because – well, we I'll tell you love. what. I'm, I'll I'm tell you what. I haven't seen you in so long. I know. I'm just stoked to and see we you. Live man. around the corner. Yeah. You look at Louis's list. He's got. He's an Olympian. He's a six times X Games medalist. U.S. Six Open. Six times. Two two tour cups. Grand Prix wins. Dancing with the stars. Uh, now you can add being on the bomb hole to that incredible list <laughs> of those accolades. Cooler. This is might have to go in the trophy the trophy <laughs> room right there. Yes. Well thank you guys so much for listening. We will see you next week over and out from the bomb hole.